Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has a different tailed beast harem. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by SHADOWWOLF354 and link in description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Do over, normal, thoughts, dialogue, telepathic dialogue and jutsu, the being who was known in his youth as Naruto Uzumaki was going home. He at this time in his life was 1236 years old, relatively young for an ascended immortal. It all started during the Fourth Great Shinobi War, when he attempted to stop Madara Chiha from using the infinite Tsukiyomi. He had attacked Madara right before the jutsu took effect, and through some ironic twist of fate, he had caused a chain reaction that destroyed that universe. Except for him somehow he had absorbed the blast since he was at the center of it. With that power boost he was transformed into an ascended being. He ended up in the in-between a space between realities where ascended beings live, most of which are known deities such as Zeus and the like. One of the ascended welcomed him and explained where he was and how he got there, and most importantly what he now was. Naturally he was shocked to learn what had happened, then he almost broke when he learned the cost of his ascension. His whole world everything and everyone he ever cared about gone, and he'd absorbed all the power from its destruction to ascend. After a month of grieving he decided that he would learn to harness his new abilities, so something like this would never happen to him again. He learned that there were infinite clusters of realities each containing an infinite number of universes, and that as an ascended being he had the power to travel between them. From the explanation he was given the reality clusters were groups of universes that all had a basic thing in common, such as the cluster he was from being inhabited by ninja, and that each cluster contained a universe for every possibility ever. And each ascended had their own group of realities that were considered theirs. Since he originated from it by rights his home cluster was his territory. He learned that everyone has a counterpart in every reality cluster and every universe in said cluster, and that when he traveled to those realities, he could either take over his counterpart in that universe, merging with them and gaining all their knowledge, memories and skills or he could go as himself. So with this in mind he began looking for clusters near his own to take as his territory and learn new abilities and skills from. He found out that most of the other ascended steered clear of the clusters near him, citing them as weird and calling them an I'm clusters. Never one to complain about free things, especially since it easily allowed him to cease a few hundred reality clusters for his purpose as he began his journey through the clusters, determined to become strong enough to protect those he cared about and to never let such a tragedy happen to him again. Through his travels he learned that as long as one of his counterparts remained in the reality cluster he was in, even if he was somehow killed in one universe he could stay in that cluster, but that universe was then only accessible as himself. Over the next thousand years he learned so many things and traveled to dozens of clusters. He fell in love and had families, and thanks to his ascended status, he could form bonds with his loved ones that gave them some of his abilities and made them immortal in that universe. Even if that universe collapsed he could call them to a different universe in that cluster or a new universe in a different cluster. He also learned to split his consciousness between bodies so he could live with all his loved ones simultaneously. But after 1200 years of training, love and exploration, he still hadn't gone back to his home cluster. Finally, he'd worked up the nerve to go back home, but then he had to find a universe as close to his original as possible. It took him 20 years to find one in the infinite expanse of universes, but finally he found one nearly identical using his senses he was able to determine that one of the major differences was Kaiubi was female, and all of the tailed beasts had a human form, some even preferred their human forms to their beast forms. Just like his original universe Madara had used his Sharingan to control Kaiubi and make her attack Kanoha, since he knows Kaiubi is female, he is assuming her name is in Karama. Naruto was planning to take his time and slowly bring down Madara's house of cards right on top of the one of Ascended. Naruto had chosen to take over his counterpart which was weird, since it was just a younger him, he took over his counterpart on the day of the academy exam. He could have gone back earlier, but he knew that only the final test scores actually counted, and. I'm making the exams more thorough where they test everything that you know. So he'd save himself the trouble of having to go through an entire year of the academy. He swam to consciousness in his new body in his apartment in Kanoha on the morning of the exam. He looked at the clock and saw it was 5 am. He immediately used one of his abilities to put up a time dilatation field around him in the room where one minute outside equaled a day inside. He could change the ratio, but seeing as he had a few hours before he had to be at the academy that was plenty. He centered himself and entered his mindscape to check on Kaiubi. Naruto entered his mind where he did the first time all those years ago in what appeared to be a sower. Man no wonder Kurama was so mad I'd be mad too if I had to live in a sower for 12 years. Shaking himself from his thoughts he followed his memories and godlike senses to Kaiubi's cage. 
When he arrived he spotted Kaiubi right away and immediately felt sorry for her she looked like hell. Her fur was matted and her ribs were showing he could tell she hadn't been able to move much and she needed a bath he assumed she was in her fox form for comfort since the cage was bare of the basic amenities. He got closer to the cage he knew she knew he was there and that she had sensed the immense increase in power he'd gotten when he took over his counterpart. Ayubi said I came to check on you, I recently learned that you were forced to attack Kanoha and that it wasn't your fault. I also wanted to tell you that now that I know that I don't blame you for all the abuse the villagers put me through and that I forgive you for what happened to my parents you were being controlled and it wasn't your fault. He then waited for her response. Naruto had decided for the direct approach as he wanted her to know that he forgave her and that he knew the truth of what happened. It would also go a long way in getting her to believe him when he told her what he was. Before the fight with Madara back in his original universe, he had come to see Kurama as a brother. He wanted to establish a similar relationship with this Kaiubi and a romantic one if she was willing his ascended senses were screaming at him to make her one of his immortal mates. And since his senses worked off how compatible their souls were for each other, he knew it would be an amazing relationship if she agreed. And basically soul bonds from HP, when established it lets the bonded see each other's lives and everything about each other, so there are no secrets and they have a telepathic connection. He can form a family bond with non-mates to give them immortality and some abilities, but they won't see everything about each other, just have a sense of undying loyalty to Naruto and Naruto to them. Ayubi had been shocked when she felt the power her Jinchuriki gained minutes earlier. It was the most power she had ever felt even stronger than the Rakuto Senen, then when he appeared in his mindscape she got nervous. Did he blame her like she did herself she knew she deserved it for making him an orphan and killing his mother who was one of her dearest friends and his father, had he come to put her down. She made the choice that she would accept whatever choice he made if he wanted her dead she wouldn't fight him, he was stronger than her anyway, and she felt if he did kill her, she would deserve it. So when he said he knew what really happened and that he forgave her she couldn't take it and in a puff smoke was in her human form. She had red hair and eyes with a bombshell body all the right curves in all the right places. D cup breasts, red fox ears on her head and nine red tails with black tips on her lower back just above her butt and a face that made Naruto's heart skip a beat. She was wearing a black and red kimono that had seen better years. He had had a few dozen wives and lovers over his thousand years of exploring, and he loved them all, and they were all beautiful, but Kaiubi was easily already one of the most beautiful, and he'd be ought to have her if she'd have him. Immediately after taking her human form for the first time in 12 years, Kaiubi broke down sobbing her heart out. Naruto rushed to her side disregarding the cage and pulled her into a gentle embrace. While he stroked her hair and cooed sweet nothings into her ears to calm her down. He knew she had 12 years of anguish all alone not able to talk to any due to the tightness of the seal. It's okay Kaiubi-chan I know the truth now and it wasn't your fault none of it was and I am so sorry you were alone for 12 years as no one deserves that. Ayubi sniffed a bit and calmed herself down, then looked Naruto in the eyes and almost gasped at the power and the wisdom she saw there how can he forgive me so easily. Naruto-kun how can you forgive a monster like me? Naruto's heart ached when he realized she thought she was a monster. I'm the reason your parents are dead. I'm the reason the villagers hate you. It's all my fault. She tried and failed to choke back another sob and looked down with her hands on his chest. Because Kaiubi-chan I know you, I know that you see me as your kid and that you loved my mom and dad and that you didn't hate the village, so it wasn't your fault that Madara used his Sharingan on you. Kaiubi-chan I love you with all my heart. You're not a monster and I'll show you that. Kaiubi's eyes widened at his words, but before she could fully process them he gently gripped her chin and lifted her it, and gently, with all the care and love he felt for the amazing woman in his arms, he kissed her. Ayubi had never kissed anyone before she'd never found anyone worthy enough or available, but as he deepened the kiss she melted into it. She hadn't talked to anyone in 12 years, let alone touched someone she was on the brink of insanity, her only purpose had been to use what power she could to heal Naruto form the abuse the villagers put him through. Naruto while still holding the kiss snapped his fingers and instantly his mindscape transformed into a lavish mansion, Kaiubi was cleansed of 12 years of grime, and they were in a bedroom fit for a queen. He swiped his tongue across her lips asking for entrance which she gladly gave. As their tongues dueled in a sloppy duet they both moaned and kept the kiss going until they needed air. They parted panting and red-faced with a trail of salvia still connecting their tongues, Naruto was the first to recover and spoke in a lust-filled tone. Ayubi-chan if it's okay with you I know a way to bond us together forever as soulmates we'd know everything about each other because our souls would be bonded. Ayubi had a shocked look on her face for a second and then one of contemplation. Should I say yes? I can guess it involves sex. I've never had anyone worthy enough to sleep with in my life, but I decided earlier that whatever he chose is I'd go with it, I was expecting him to hate me maybe even kill me. I do love him and I've always wanted someone to spend my life with. Ahaha I guess I've already made up my mind then she smiled at Naruto. 
Okay Naruto-kun I'll be your soulmate if you'll have me. Naruto beamed at her. You won't regret this Kaiubi-chan and I'll be gentle. Naruto started another kiss and then with experienced hands, gently groped Kaiubi's breasts through her now brand new kimono and broke the kiss to speak. We'll be together for an eternity my sweet vixen, I'll never leave your side, and I'll make you happy that I promise and I never break my promises that's my ninja way. He then laid her gently on the bed. The time bubble fell, and a young looking blonde boy stood up from his sitting position with a grin. Man talk about insatiable Kumiko-chan. It's not my fault it felt so amazing that I couldn't get enough Naruto-kun. She purred over the bond. Naruto gave a sheepish laugh and rubbed the back of his head. Yeah fair enough, but still that was intense if it wasn't for my physiology I'd be in a coma. Not that a sexual coma from you would be a bad thing, but I have things to do. He heard Kumiko snickering over the bond and rolled his eyes at his newest wife. Okay time to get ready to go to the academy. He grinned at the thought of the reactions he was going to garner. So with that thought in mind he moved over to his closet and frowned at his old orange jumpsuits. Man I still love the color orange, but it's just not practical at all for a ninja. So he thought about it and decided to go with all black clothes with red highlights in honor of his mother's hair. It helped that red was basically deep orange, so it was also one of his favorite colors. He took a second to envision his desired outfit then snapped his fingers and just like that he had his new clothes. His outfit consisted of a black long sleeve shirt with deep red stripes down the sleeves and sides with a red Uzumaki clan swirl in the center on the back. His pants were plain black Anbu style pants with a few pouches for kunai and various things. Along with black shoes, socks and underwear, to complete the outfit he also had his Anpakuto Zero on his back. But that done he ate some instant ramen for breakfast, even after 1200 years ramen was still amazing to him. So Naruto I know the plan from the bond, but are you sure that's what you want to do? Kumiko had gotten the gist of the plan from Naruto's memories and was a bit concerned about how it would go over. Naruto gave a foxy grin. I'm sure Kumiko-chan, it's the most believable thing I could come up to explain my abilities and knowledge. The plan being to tell the Sandame Suratobi and anyone else who needed to know that he had been hiding his true abilities for years due to fear of the villagers trying to kill him and the civilian council banishing him from the village and that since he was now a shinobi, he no longer had as much to fear from them and had decided to reveal his abilities. As to how he got them he planned to tell them the truth about Kumiko and that she had been training him for years and he would go on to explain that she has the ability to create time bubbles that ceased the occupants aging so they could train. He was only planning to tell those he was closest to, such as family bonded that he was a time traveler and only mate bonded would know the whole truth for now. As for Kumiko's seal they had decided she would stay in it for now since they didn't want to alert anyone to Naruto's true power. As it was Kumiko didn't mind staying in the seal for a few more years since the bond let her converse with Naruto and he could make a make a cage bunch of her so she could get out of the seal and when it dispelled she would get all the memories. It wasn't the same as actually being there but it was good enough for now. It also helped that she now had a mansion fit for a queen in the middle of a beautiful mountain range instead of a cage and a sower. Naruto finished up his breakfast and noticed it was time to head to the academy. So he headed out the door towards the academy, along the way he noticed the hateful looks directed at him from the villagers that he hadn't received in a thousand years and chuckled at the irony of it all. Ah good old Konoha. In no time at all he was at the academy he had 10 minutes to spare and figured he'd use the time to start getting to know another one of his possible mates. Hinata was nervous about the exams today and whether or not she would get good marks. She wanted to do good to make her father proud and hopefully get a certain blonde to notice her. That's when she saw Naruto enter the room and her heart skipped a beat he looked nothing like before. Thanks to the wardrobe chain she could see his body better, she assumed that his jumpsuit had hidden all his muscle because she'd never thought he was so in shape. Not only that but he had a confidence about him that wasn't there before, her heart sped up when she noticed he was coming right towards her and she wondered what he might want. Naruto made a beeline straight for the young Hyuga heiress and stopped beside her. Hey Hinata-chan is this seat taken? Hinata was stunned for a moment he wants to sit beside me. Uh no no Naruto said that seat isn't he taken. She blushed and poked her index fingers together. Naruto still couldn't get over how he had not noticed her for the longest time the first time round and he was going to give her a good healthy relationship this time around if she was willing. He grinned at her and sat down to her right, remembering Kiba liked to sit on her left most of the time. Hey Hinata I wanted to ask if you wanted to be my friend, I don't have many, and you did help me out that one time when I was younger. I'm sorry for ignoring you all this time I did it because I didn't want the bullies to come after you because you were my friend, but since we're graduating today and I'll be a shinobi, I don't have to worry so much about that, and I wanted to start over with you if you were willing. He gave her a gentle smile and waited for her response. Hinata was stunned. Naruto wants to be my friend. But she already knew her answer. I'd like that Naruto I don't have many friends either. She gave a small honest smile. 
Thank you for giving me the chance to be your friend Hinata, I won't make you regret it I promise. He smiled at her for a few more seconds, then the rest of the students filed in, so he turned his attention to that. Dibalike usual sat to Hinata's left and gave them both a look, then grinned at them. Finally. You two stopped playing hard to get with each other. Hinata blushed at his words and ducked her head. Naruto grinned right back and gave a retort. Yeah I asked her to be my friend, but I wouldn't be opposed to her becoming my girlfriend later on, once we get to know each other. That was all it took Hinata fainted with a monstrous crimson blush. Naruto and Kiba both gave a chuckle, and Naruto reached over and put an arm around her to make sure she didn't fall out of her seat. Kiba smiled at the action. It's about time you noticed that monstrous crush she's had on you for years. Naruto nodded and sheepishly rubbed the back of his head with his free hand. I've known for a while, but I didn't do anything about it because I didn't want all those bullies and the villagers to try anything because she was my friend. However, since we're becoming shinobi today I won't have to worry as much. Kiba's eyes widened in realization and he nodded in understanding. That was really smart Naruto, just take care of her alright. She's a precious friend of mine and if you hurt her you'll answer to me. Naruto gained an expression that slightly awed Kiba because of the power in his eyes. I would never hurt her and I'll protect her with my life Kiba with my life. Naruto was aware that Hinata had woken up and was pretending to still be unconscious so she could listen to what they were saying, he wanted her to hear that because it was the honest truth and he wanted Kiba to know his friend was safe. Kiba nodded in acceptance of that. Man I get the feeling Naruto has gained some serious power, this exam is going to be interesting. Before they could get any deeper into conversation the door opened and Naruka walked in. Mizuki wasn't there for whatever reason and Naruto counted as lucky stars, then turned to Aruka with a grin. Naruto shook Hinata gently to let her know class was starting, then went back to his thoughts. Aruka stepped forward to give his speech. Okay class today is the day of the final exam if you pass you'll be given a ninja rank, all of you who pass will be given the genin rank. Any who manage to get a perfect score in all areas will be automatically recommended for the chunin exams in a few months by the Hokage himself. The student with the top score will receive a special black clothed headband and the title rookie of the year. You will be tested in up to four areas, the mandatory tests to pass are ninjutsu and tojutsu additional tests, should you choose to take the Markei and JUTSU swordsmanship and jinjutsu. With that he led the students all the way out to the third training field. Naruto noticed there were storm clouds in the sky and thunder in the distance, but it wasn't raining, this was better than he could have hoped for in regards to his debut, there were also three shinobi there to oversee the exams they were, his old sensei Kakashi Haddock, the proctor of the Chunin exams Anko Midarashi, and captain of the soon-to-be teammate Kurina Yuhi. Okay when your name is called step forward. The ninjutsu test will be first then to jutsu, and if anyone wants to take them kinjutsu and jinjutsu will be last. So let us know if you wish to take them after the first two, keep in mind you have two jonin and a takibetsu jonin watching you so no funny business. The Kanoha 11 plus Asu were called forward in alphabetical order by their last names. All of the first 10 scored the highest in the class with all A and B ranks on the genin scale on the ninjutsu test. The ninjutsu test had them doing basic jutsu, such as the clone jutsu and transformation jutsu, with an opportunity to showcase any extra jutsu they might know. Sasuke and Naruto were last since their last names started with a U. Sasuke Chiha. At his name everyone got excited to see what he could do. He did a superb clone jutsu and transformation jutsu. Then for his extra jutsu he did something that stunned the judges. He made the hand seals at a high gen and low tune and speed and called out. Pain. Kakaku no jutsu. Fire release. Fireball jutsu. The result was a moderately sized fireball of a low tune and level, but it left him out of breath and panting. So they gave him an A for the clone jutsu and A for the transformation jutsu, and an S on the genin scale for the fireball jutsu. Everyone was impressed he was the only one to get an S so far, even if it was only on the genin scale, and on a jutsu he learned on his own time, that became even more impressive. Last but currently not least was Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Haruka had high hopes for Naruto this year, and judging by his appearance he was right to have them. Naruto calmly walked forward, most of his classmates weren't expecting much from him, and it showed in their bored expressions. All except the proctors, Kiba, Hinata and a two or three others seemed ready to move on to Tajutsu. Naruto walked a little out past the judges to give him the space he needed, then turned back to them before he began he spoke. Okay just you guys just so you know I've been training in secret for years and only slacked off to cover for myself until I was strong enough to protect me and those I care about. Most of the class gave him disbelieving looks, then Sakura spoke up. Just get on with it Naruto Baka. He gave her his best foxy grin, then turned to Kakashi. Kakashi sensei you'll need your Sharingan to verify all this. Kakashi's visible eye widened at that. How does this kid know my name? And that I have the Sharingan. Planning to ask Naruto those questions later he gave a hesitant nod and revealed his Sharingan. 
Naruto's words and the fact that Kakashi had the Sharingan drew gasps of surprise and amazement from all those present. The instructors were all excited to see what he had especially Aruka and Kakashi. Meanwhile the rest of the class were giving him curious and incredulous looks except for Kiba and Hinata who were excited to see what he could do. Aruka cleared his throat to get everyone's attention, then spoke. Okay Naruto you may begin, first the clone jutsu then the transformation jutsu after that you can show us any extra jutsu you have. Naruto nodded and made the hand sign for the cage bunch and no jutsu. All but Kakashi were calm but the jonin with his sharingan recognized the amount of chakra Naruto put into to it and his eyes widened at what he heard next. Had you cage bunch and no jutsu. Multiple shadow clone jutsu. In a massive puff of smoke behind him over a thousand clones appeared all perfectly formed and in a perfect marching formation. Everyone there was stunned into silence, the students couldn't believe their eyes neither could Aruka, Kakashi, Anko or Kurinai, they had never seen such a powerful cage bunch and jutsu. Naruto smirked, then before they could recover made the sign for the transformation jutsu. Ange, transform. Another puff of smoke and all the clones, transformed into 66 perfect copies, each of the Konoha 11 plus Asuk and without Naruto plus the four instructors. He then dispelled all the clones and waited for them to ask him for his extra jutsu. It took a few minutes for everyone to come out of the daze they were in, and they were still speechless. Then Kiba spoke. What the hell Naruto, how did you do that? Everyone there gave nods agreeing with his question. Naruto's response was a sly grin before he spoke. I'll tell the instructors all the details later in private and you and Hinata as well Kiba, as for the rest of you it was part of my training. The instructors, Hinata and Kiba nodded in agreement and the rest gave him angry or disappointed looks except Sasuke who seemed to be in shock. Naruka once again cleared his throat and spoke. Okay Naruto you can now show us up to three ninjutsu for extra points if you still have the chakra. Everyone was anxious to see what he would do. Naruto nodded and spoke. I have two to show you. Naruka and the other instructors nodded and everyone was excited to see what the next two were, but after that last two, they didn't expect him to have enough chakra for anything insane. He flashed through a set of hand signs so fast Kakashi's Sharingan couldn't track them all, and to everyone else it was a blur, then spoke the name of the jutsu, and it shocked them all again. Pain. Goryuka no jutsu, fire release. Great dragon fire technique. The result was a massive dragon-shaped fireball being shot into and parting the clouds. For the second time in 10 minutes everyone there was stunned into silence, but he wasn't done yet and flashed through another set of hand signs just as fast as the first, then spoke the name of his technique. Raiden. Dermjin. Lightning release. Great wolf deity. Man. Basically a wolf version of Sasuke's Kirin, where the wolf looks like the wolf in the game Akami, but made of lightning. And it doesn't require storm clouds it just makes it easier. His fingertips sparked with lightning stunning everyone as he moved them in a sweeping circular pattern for a second, and. Like lightning bending from Avatar the last airbender, the show not the shitty movie. Then with his index and middle finger on his right hand pointed into the sky and fired a massive lightning bolt as powerful as an actual bolt of lightning. The puzzling part was everyone got the sense there should be more to it with a name like that, when nothing happened for a few seconds, most of them thought that it was actually over, then they saw a massive wolf made of pure lightning descend from the clouds. The wolf hovered for a second as if looking down on the mere mortals below it, then Naruto raised his hand and brought it down to point at a spot about a quarter mile away in the middle of a clearing in the training field. The wolf moved as fast as the lightning it was made of and struck the indicated area disappearing in a massive lightning explosion, as big as a hundred lightning bolts that made the whole class fall over, and the instructors had to send chakra to their feet to stay standing. Once everyone was on their feet again and staring at Naruto wide-eyed and utterly speechless for the fourth time in ten minutes, he gave them all a big cheeky grin and asked. Well do I pass. Everyone their face faulted into the ground. Bakashi was the first to recover from the shock of it all and speak. Yes Naruto you pass, however you will be explaining to the Hokage later about that training of yours and how you learned for at least SS rank ninjutsu. And also about how you have the chakra reserves to do that back to back with, if my eye isn't deceiving me plenty to spare. Naruto gave a sheepish laugh and rubbed the back of his head before nodding and understanding. So what are my scores? He asked with some excitement seeping into his voice. The four instructors huddled for a second then nodded and broke. The whole class listened anxiously for his score. Haruka stepped forward and grinned at Naruto before speaking. Naruto Uzumaki your scores are as follows, clone jutsu score. SS above jonin level, transformation jutsu score. SS above jonin level, extra jutsu. Number of extra jutsu 2 score. For both is SSS cage level. Everyone was speechless yet again at his scores. Next time on. A Beast Comes Home, Chapter 3. The Exam Part 2. The class moves on to Tejutsu while still reeling over Naruto's newfound power. Unknown to them he wasn't even tired from the ninjutsu exam and is ready to rock the world of whichever poor SOB gets made his sparring partner. 
everyone was still shocked by Naruto's display during the ninjutsu exam. Some of them were a little fearful of approaching him, Kiba and Hinata however, were eager to question him. Hey Naruto what the hell kind of training have you been doing anyways? Kiba was anxious to know because to get those kind of scores, it must have been insane. He really wasn't kidding when he said he waited till he could protect those he cared about. With that kind of strength anything short of a cage level shinobi would be hard pressed to keep up with him. Anata nodded in agreement of Kiba's question, the three of them were a little away from everybody else waiting on the instructors to give everyone a sparring partner so they could begin the Tajutsu exam. Naruto smirked. Well you see I wanted to get strong to protect those I care about, and thanks to a friend of mine who trained me for the last few years in secret using special regimes and the like, I managed to become a jonin level shinobi, and due to curtain circumstances, my chakra reserves are huge already. So that's why I can use my most powerful jutsu back to back like that and still be okay. Tiba nodded a bit hesitantly after that statement. Naruto-san are, are you going to have enough stamina for the Tajutsu X exam? Hinata was amazed at Naruto's skill in the ninjutsu part of the exams, but didn't want Naruto to overwork himself. Naruto smiled gently at Hinata and moved over beside her to drape an arm across her shoulders, making her blush. Thank you for the concern Hinata, but I'll be fine, and I promise I'll stop if I get too tired okay. Hinata ducked her head a little and blushed more at his thanks, then nodded. Meanwhile most of the class, instructors included were wondering what he would be capable of on the Tajutsu exam. Some of the students were hoping that his ninjutsu skills were his best area and that he wouldn't be as good at tajutsu. Iruka stepped forward to announce the sparring lineup. Okay we will now begin the tajutsu part of the exams. Iruka took a second to look over his list, then announced the first match. The matches that followed were as expected with the first 10 of the Kanoha 11, taking the top spots in the class with A and B ranks on the genin scale. And as expected Naruto and Sasuke got pitted against each other. Naruto Uzumaki vs. Sasuke Cheha. Sakura was as usual rooting for Sasuke, but after Naruto's earlier display was little nervous about the outcome. You can do it Sasuke kick his ass. Sasuke was a little nervous himself after Naruto's display of ninjutsu, but wouldn't let that stop him. Both of them moved to the center of the improvised ring that had been set up in the middle of the clearing in the third training ground. So you're not actually as much of an idiot as you act sometimes huh Naruto? Well that's good to know, but I'm not going to let you win. With that Sasuke got into to a low tune and level to jutsu stance. Naruto got into a loose stance with his hands raised high in front of his face with a slight bounce in his feet and a traditional Muay Thai stance that no one recognized. Naruka looked them both over then nodded and raised, then dropped his hand. Begin. Sasuke dashed in intending on not giving Naruto time to do anything. He led with a low left to right spinning sweep to the legs that Naruto dodged by hopping over it. He tried to follow up with a high right-handed punch to the face, but that was swept aside by Naruto's wrist, so he went in with a left-handed punch to the gut that Naruto caught with his right hand. To get out of Naruto's grip he went for a left knee aimed at Naruto's stomach, Naruto blocked it with his left forearm, then let go and spun into a roundhouse kick to Sasuke's left side, launching him about 10 feet to Naruto's left. Sasuke gasped out in pain at the force behind the blow and hit the ground on his right side, but managed to roll to his feet. Everyone was surprised at the skill Naruto was showing, even with his earlier display of ninjutsu, they expected it to at least be a close fight, but he was handling Sasuke fairly easily. Damn it all when did the dope get this good, he really wasn't kidding about having done some insane training I can tell he is holding back, but not how much. Sasuke gritted his teeth at his own apparent weakness, then assumed his stance again and motioned Naruto to bring it on. Naruto nodded and dashed at him with low jonin speed, further surprising the audience. Then came in with a leaping low kick from his right leg to Sasuke's left thigh, Sasuke having expected a higher stomach kick, didn't see it coming in time and could only take the hit and grunt in pain. Naruto backed off a bit, then came back in with a hard right straight aimed at Sasuke's face, Sasuke just managed to duck in time, but the force of the punch sent a shockwave past his face. If I get hit with it it's over. Not wanting to stay on the defensive Sasuke hopped and tried to drop a left elbow to Naruto's right shoulder, Naruto caught the elbow with his left hand, then gave a kick with his left leg to Sasuke's right side, once again launching him about 10 feet this time to Naruto's right. Sasuke hit the ground on his already injured left side and grunted in pain before rolling to his feet panting. Damn it. I can't beat him he's still holding back I can tell, just not how much. Swallowing his pride Sasuke spoke. Naruka sensei I forfeit, Naruto is holding back quite a bit and I still can't win as it is. Naruka nodded and called the match. Winner Naruto Uzumaki. Everyone was stunned Naruto had just beaten one of the two best Tajutsu users in their age group, the other being Rock Lee. Sasuke's fangirls were pissed but didn't say anything because they didn't want to get in trouble during the exams. Naruto and Sasuke were still in the ring and Naruto walked up to Sasuke. What come to gloat about how you beat me in both tests? 
Naruto shook his head in the negative and placed his hand on Sasuke's shoulder and spoke so no one else could hear. No I just wanted to say that you're good and I'm not saying that out of pity. I've had years of training under an amazing sensei to the point where I'm at a lower medium jonin level in tojutsu, and you're right I was holding back, but just so you could show the instructors what you could do not because you weren't a worthy opponent. Even though he was lying about his true level Naruto was being honest about his intentions. This time around he wanted to try and be a positive influence on Sasuke and see if he could save Sasuke from going down the path of the Avenger. Despite his cocky attitude, at the beginning Sasuke did have the potential to be a good person. It was the curse mark, Orochimaru, and his own brother Itachi, that had turned his desire to get stronger into a corrupt greed and need for power. Granted Itachi had at least some good intentions, but as they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Sasuke was surprised at Naruto's words, he was expecting Naruto to gloat and put him down, but now he found his opinion of Naruto rising. His main problem with Naruto before had been his slacker nature and disrespectful attitude. And. I know ironic that that's his problem with Naruto. However, with some of the truth of his training revealed along with the skills to back up his words and his new still happy-go-lucky but more respectful attitude, Sasuke found his words truthful and sincere. As to his response he didn't really know what to say. Um thanks I guess and that was a good fight. Naruto nodded with a smile and walked out of the ring back towards the rest of the class, with Sasuke trailing a little behind. When the two reached the class Naruto received glares from all the Sasuke fangirls except Ino, who was giving him an appraising look, chief among which was Sakura who had a bone to pick with him. Naruto you brute did you really have to be so hard on poor Sasuke-kun. Before Naruto could retort surprisingly Sasuke spoke. It's okay Sakura, he was holding back quite a bit, and besides it was a spar it should be taken seriously, which despite holding back he did take me seriously. Everyone there was stunned at the maturity Sasuke was showing, and since he apparently didn't mind the law so much his fangirls backed down a bit, though they still gave Naruto slightly angry looks. The instructors huddled for a moment, then nodded and Aruka stepped forward with a smile. Okay you two very nice work the both of you were amazing, I haven't seen tojutsu skills like that in years. Now then your scores for the tojutsu exam. He took a moment to double check his clipboard, then spoke. Sasuke Chiha, score S rank on the genin scale. With an added note of good deduction skills for figuring out you couldn't win excellent job. Sasuke nodded in acceptance of that, meanwhile Lee was in the background with clouds over his head at his loss, before getting excited and ranting about doubling his training. Naruto Uzumaki, score B rank on the Jonin scale. With an added note that you were apparently holding back, but since we can only judge you on what you showed we gave you that score. Outstanding work Naruto. Everyone went slightly wide-eyed at that score, but most were starting to understand that Naruto really wasn't kidding when he said he had done some serious training, so they weren't as shocked as they were at first. Naruto nodded with a big smile at Aruka. After that they took a 30-minute lunch break. During the lunch break Naruto made his way over to Kiba and Hinata to talk to his two friends. Kiba saw Naruto sneaking up behind Hinata and smirked. Hello, Hinata-chan. Came Naruto's voice from right behind her. Hinata was shocked and jumped a little with a cute eep. Naruto chuckled at her cuteness. How in the hell did I never notice this beautiful girl for so long last time? Oh Naruto-kun, I'm starting to see why you like this little one so much, and if your memories are anything to go by in a few more years, she'll be drop-dead gorgeous. I can't wait for her to join the bond. Kumiko purred into Naruto's mind. Yeah I know Kumiko-chan she is amazing, and this time around I'm going to give her the loving relationship she deserves. Naruto took a seat next to Hinata under the tree her and Kiba were using for shade, since the clouds had cleared during the tojutsu exam. He pulled out a simple sandwich and drink for his lunch he would have preferred Raymond, but it isn't exactly boxed lunch friendly. So either of you taking an extra test? Kiba was the first to speak. No I don't know kinjutsu or jinjutsu and besides I'm worn out from the other two tests. Naruto nodded in understanding then turned to Hinata for her answer. Hinata blushed at his gaze and answered. Me too I don't know either and I am tired as well. Naruto smiled at her. Yeah you did great on both tests Hinata-chan, I'll bet your father will be proud. Hinata ducked her head and blushed harder at his praise, but not at her thanks for his words. The three friends sat in a comfortable silence as they ate their lunch and waited out the 30-minute lunch break. After the 30 minutes were up Aruka stepped forward. Okay anyone who wants to take either of the other two tests come up here and pick which you want to take anyone who is done find a seat. Only three students stepped up. Naruto who chose to take both, Sasuke who chose to take the Jinjutsu exam and Sakura who chose to also take the Jinjutsu exam. The Jinjutsu exam was first and all three passed. Sasuke and Sakura surprisingly tied with a B on the Genin scale, in both dispelling Jinjutsu and casting it. Naruto got a B on the Jonin scale for casting and an S on the Jonin scale for dispelling them, even Kurenai couldn't cast a Jinjutsu that could hold him for more than a couple seconds. 
everyone who at this point were at least getting an idea of Naruto's true level were once again highly impressed. After the Jinjutsu test was the Kenjutsu test and everyone was excited to see what Naruto could do. Some had noticed the dangerous looking sword on his back and based on his performance so far were expecting more of the same. Iruka stepped forward with a smile for Naruto. Okay Naruto let's see if you can make it 4 for 4. Naruto smiled back with a foxy grin and nodded. The Kenjutsu exam will consist of two parts the first will be a spar against shadow clones provided by Kakashi, who is a jonin level Kenjutsu user. And. I'm giving Kakashi sword skills since in my fic he learned some of his father's style and has copied numerous styles with his Sharingan. It won't be a main skill of his since it just isn't his style, but he'll have it in his back pocket. The second part will give you a chance to demonstrate any special techniques you know. Naruto nodded and moved to the field. Kakashi rightly assuming Naruto was at least Chunin level in Kenjutsu started off with a maximum 20 clones, which put a serious strain on his chakra reserves. Naruto smirked and drew his sword which drew gasps for its beauty, what followed could only be described as a masterwork, none of the clones could touch him, and he effortlessly annihilated them all in under half a minute. Everyone for the fourth time that day were shocked at his abilities. Some of the girls were even starting to give Naruto hungry looks and Ino seemed to be pondering her opinion of him. Once that was over Aruka stepped forward still smiling. Excellent work Naruto, now for the second part you can show us up to three kenjutsu techniques, they can either be chakra based or just special sword styles that you haven't already shown. Naruto nodded and moved so everyone was behind him. Okay I have two to show you and they're both my own inventions. Everyone's eyes widened at that not only had he created an S rank lightning jutsu, but he also apparently created two kenjutsus as well. Naruto readied his sword for his first attack, then spoke its name while swinging the blade horizontally, making sure to fire it at only a jonin level, which didn't even require him to unseal the blade. The Kuho, Black Phoenix, which resulted in a fairly big phoenix made of black and red flames shooting from the blade at the row of trees in front of him, cleaving them in two like a hot knife through butter and causing whatever came in contact with the phoenix to turn to ashes. After about 100 feet it dissipated leaving about 15 trees toppled over and scorched. Once again everyone's jaws were on the floor. Naruto chuckled and prepared his next attack. He squared his shoulders, then spoke the name of his attack. Hakuraiga. Dark Fire Lightning Fang. Which coated the blade in black and red flames and black lightning. Then he swung the blade vertically along the same trajectory as his first attack. And. If you want an idea of what it looks like it's basically a Chigo's Jutsuga Tensho from Bleach, but made of fire and lightning. The result was a fire and lightning wave that tore a one foot wide five foot deep hundred foot long trench into the ground. He turned back to face everyone who all had odd looks on their faces including the instructors and walked back over to the rest of the class. Hiba and Hinata came up to praise his skill. That was unbelievable Naruto. Kiba exclaimed with a smile. Hinata nodded her agreement with a blush and a little smile. You were um amazing Naruto-kun. Naruto nodded his thanks to them with a smile, then quickly planted a kiss on Hinata's cheek and said with a beaming smile for her. Thanks Hinata-chan. It was too much for her, and she fainted right there before she hit the ground Naruto caught her and held her up, causing Kiba to chuckle. A few minutes later the instructors broke apart and lined up in front of the class, Haruka cleared his throat. Naruto Uzumaki your scores for the Kenjutsu exam are as follows for the first part S rank jonin level, and for the second SS jonin level. This got excited murmurs from the class, while Naruto just nodded while still holding Hinata. After about a minute Haruka cleared his throat again, and the class quit it down. Okay I'll now announce the top 5 scores for the exams and rookie of the year. Naruto gently shook Hinata awake and when she woke up she had a furious blush. He stood beside her and chuckled at her cuteness, then turned his attention back to Aruka to hear the scores. In 5th place with a respectable B average on the genin scale is Sakura Haruno. Sakura pumped her fist and grinned earning glares from some of the other Kanoichi. In 4th place with an impressive A-B average on the genin scale is Kiba and Izuka. Kiba pumped his fist, while Lakamaru let out a happy bark Naruto and Hinata both gave him a smile. In third place with a solid A average on the genin scale is Hinata Hayuga. Naruto and Kiba smiled at Hinata and Naruto wrapped an arm around her and hugged her making her blush. In second place with a very impressive AS average on the genin scale is Sasuke Chiha. Sasuke gave a curt nod at that knowing Naruto had earned first place. Some of his fangirls giving Naruto murderous glares knowing he had gotten first place. And in first place and also rookie of the year, along with an automatic recommendation for the Chunin exams from the Hokage himself with an unheard of S average on the Jonin scale in all four tests, Naruto Uzumaki. Please come up here so you may receive your special black clothed headband. Naruto smiled and made his way up to the front toward Aruka, some of the class were giving him nasty looks. When he got to the front Aruka tied his new headband onto his forehead and spoke so no one could hear. 
I knew you could do it Naruto I'm so proud of you, but damn that was amazing, tomorrow I'll take you out to Raymond to celebrate. Naruto beamed at him and nodded. Before he could rejoin the rest of the class Kakashi stepped forward and spoke in his ear. You're coming with me to see the Hokage ride after this so don't go anywhere. Naruto gave a sheepish laugh and nod, then rejoined the class. Surprisingly some of his classmates congratulated him on his win even Sasuke gave him a nod, his fangirls however, were trying to glare holes in Naruto's head. Okay class that it's the exam is over the full list of those who passed will be on the board out front of the academy tomorrow. Those who pass will report to classroom 2B in one week to meet their Jonin senseis, class dismissed. Most of the students headed home Naruto bid Kiba and Hinata goodbye, stating he'd see them in a week hopefully sooner. They nodded and left then he made his way over to Kakashi to go see the Hokage. Now that the exam was over and most of the students had gone home, Naruto knew it was time to bite the bullet and go see the Hokage, so he made his way over to Kakashi. Kakashi was waiting nearby under a tree in the shade from the afternoon sun, reading his infamous little orange book. Kakashi sensei I'm ready to go see the Hokage now. Kakashi looked up from his book and nodded before standing, then checking to make sure he had a copy of Naruto's exam scores for the Hokage, before turning back to Naruto. Okay Naruto let's get his over with, I don't suppose you can use a shunshin, body flicker, can you? Naruto gave a nod, so Kakashi used a leaf shunshin to go to just outside the Hokage mansion. Naruto followed a second later using a special black and red fire and lightning shunshin he had invented over his long life. Kakashi arrived and moments later Naruto arrived via his personal shunshin earning, a whistle of appreciation from Kakashi due to the style of it. The two made their way up to the top of the Hokage mansion, and Kakashi let the secretary know that they needed to see the Hokage. She gave Naruto a suspicious look before nodding and saying it would be a minute the two nodded and leaned on the wall to wait about five minutes later they were called in. The two entered the office to see the Hokage behind his desk, glaring at all the paperwork in front of him. Kakashi cleared his throat before speaking. Hokage-sama I've brought Naruto Uzumaki here to meet with you and discuss his exam scores. Hiruzen's eyes widened in surprise before turning and giving Naruto a serious look, then he turned back to Kakashi. Give them here Kakashi then Naruto can explain once I read them. Both of them nodded and Kakashi walked forward and gave the Hokage the copy of Naruto's exam scores. Those are his scores from all four exams I had my Sharingan active for each one, so I know it was him and not an impostor. Hiruzen nodded and took the file to read as he read it, his eyes bulged until they were the size of dinner plates. Once he was done he dropped the folder and turned to Naruto with a stern look. Explain now Naruto. Naruto stepped forward and spoke. Sure Jiji, but before I do can you ask your Anbu to leave, I only want you and Kakashi to hear this. Hiruzen nodded and signaled for them to leave for Anbu melted from the shadows and walked out of the office. Naruto then pointed to the selling. What about the fifth one Jiji? This got a surprised look from Kakashi and Hiruzen, but before they could say anything a fifth Anbu with an all-white mask dropped from the raptors. He took a step towards the door, but before he could take a second step, Naruto appeared behind him and a flash of speed even the Hokage couldn't track and gave him a chop to the neck knocking him out. The Hokage called an Anbu in and told him to take the spy to Ibiki for interrogation. Once the Anbu was gone Hiruzen and Kakashi turned to Naruto with expectant looks on their faces. Naruto took a second before he spoke. Okay so basically I've been training in secret for the last few years under a sensei using a special regime that helped me become a jonin level shinobi. Both of their eyes widened at this information, then Kakashi spoke. But who trained you? And why keep it a secret till now? There is a nodded in agreement of those questions. I trained in secret because if the villagers knew I was getting stronger, they would have assumed the fox had taken over and tried even harder to kill me. Both of them gasped at his mention of the Kaiubi, then Hiruzen spoke in a deadly tone. Who told you there is an S-rank law in place to prevent anyone from telling you? Naruto gave Hiruzen what could only be described as a disappointed look before replying. The Kaiubi herself told me and she also told me who my parents were, Jiji you should have told me yourself it would have been hard, but I had the right to know. Hiruzen looked down at that and nodded before speaking. I know Naruto I should have, but I could never convince myself you were ready to know, and if the council had known they would have tried to use you in political games. No one besides me, you and the Toad San and Jureya know who your parents are, as it is, I thought it was already bad enough with them knowing you had the Kaiubi in you. He looked Naruto in the eye and asked. Can you forgive me for keeping the truth from you Naruto? Even if I had your best interests in mind I still didn't like lying to you. Naruto gave a gentle smile before speaking. I know Jiji those choices are always hard I understand and forgive you. Hiruzen gave a relieved smile and nod, then Kakashi cleared his throat and spoke. Naruto parents aside did you say you spoke to the Kaiubi and that it's a she? Hiruzen and Kakashi saw Naruto give a nod before speaking. The upper name is Kumiko and she didn't attack the village 12 years ago, Madara Ichiha used his Sharingan to force her to attack after he broke the seal on my mom while she was weak from giving birth. 
The Kashi and Hiruzen both went wide-eyed at his words before Hiruzen spoke with some heat in his voice. Naruto you can't trust what that demon says there is no way she is telling the truth. Kakashi nodded in agreement of that statement. Immediately the temperature in the room seemed to drop 10 degrees and the glare Naruto leveled at them made even the Hokage feel a slight shiver of fear trail up his spine. Naruto answered with a tone that brokered no argument. She is not a demon, if you actually look at the records there is only two confirmed unprovoked attacks by her on anywhere, both involving Madara. The first when he fought the first Hokage at the Valley of the End and the second 12 years ago both times Madara used his Sharingan to control her. I mean think about she is a few thousand years old and in all that time she only ever attacks twice unprovoked. Doesn't that seem off to you? If she was a demon as everyone says there should be dozens of records of unprovoked attacks, but if you stop and read every one of them the humans started the fight assuming she was a monster. Trying to kill her for no other reason than she was different or trying to use her for power. Naruto's statement made both of them stop and think, and when they did they realized he was right all of the records they could recall, indicated the people started it. After a few minutes of pondering Naruto's words Hiruzen spoke. You're right Naruto there is only two unprovoked attacks that I recall. But still Madara Ichiha being alive is a bad omen for the village, especially if he orchestrated the attack 12 years ago. Hiruzen was already making plans to have Jiraiya use his spy network to see if they could find evidence of Madara's whereabouts. Him being alive would explain an abundance of questions and occurrences. Naruto nodded in agreement with that the Hokage didn't even know the half of it, but that would come later. Kakashi once again steered the conversation back on course. So who trained you Naruto? Naruto gave a foxy grin. Why Kamiko-chan of course, who else did you think it was? She has the ability to slow time and halt aging in a small bubble around her me, her jinchuriki for about an hour on the outside, which is a day in the field. So I would go into my mindscape and train there, and she would use her chakra to transfer the results of the physical side of the training to my body. It hurts like hell, and only I could survive it, since she's been in me pretty much all my life, but a day of training for an hour real time once a day for a few years is how I'm so strong. The Kashi and Hiruzen both went wide-eyed at the explanation, but thought it over and nodded because it made as much sense as anything about the tailed beasts. Then Kakashi spoke. So what are you going to do Naruto? Your jonin level you could apply for a Takubetsu jonin rank and be a full jonin in a year or so. Naruto nodded and spoke. Yeah that may be true, but I only have training in my mind not so much the actual application in the real world, so I think I'll take my time and work my way up like everyone else besides if I got made a Takibetsu Jonin, those idiotic villagers would riot even more than they already will, after what is going to happen when they find out who my parents are. The real reason Naruto wanted to work his way up was so he could help his friends, and he wanted to do it this way, so he could get close to some potential mates. In actuality he had more combat experience in his 1236 years of life than most of the Jonins plus the Hokage combined, but he wasn't planning on revealing that to but a select few. They both gave a nod and understanding, and Hiruzen gave a sad smile. If they would only stop to get to know you they would see you're no demon, but they let their grief for their loved ones turn into hate. Naruto and Kakashi nodded in agreement then Naruto spoke. On that note I having something to talk about regarding my parents as well, and since Kumiko said he knew my father Kakashi should know who my parents were, and he is welcome to hear what I'm about to say, as long as he doesn't reveal it, unless I want it to be revealed. Hiruzen and Kakashi both nodded Kakashi was curious to know. As Jiji already knows my parents were Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki. Kakashi gasped out and stared at Naruto with his visible eye with a shocked look of realization on his face. How in the hell did I never notice it before take away the whisker marks, and you have a pint-sized version of Sensei, and his last name there was only one Yuzumaki in the village it was so obvious. After giving Kakashi a minute to process that information Naruto continued. I wish to claim my inheritance and assume my position as clan head I've read up on the laws, and there are exceptions for age for the last member of a clan, all of which I meet. Plus, I'm the last of two clans which lifts the Chunin rank requirement restriction, but will most likely force the craw on me, which I'm prepared to accept, if it comes to that most didn't know it, but before he died, my father made the Namikas as an official clan, and he would have recruited members but passed on before he could. Hiruzen nodded because he knew Naruto was right. You're right Naruto I'll call a meeting of the Shinobi Council first thing tomorrow morning to make the announcement for now we will keep the civilians out of it, since this is a Shinobi matter. Also, I'll give you directions to the Namika's estate it's under a blood seal, so only you can open it. And tomorrow your account at the bank will be updated with your inheritance. Naruto nodded his thanks and Hiruzen handed him a map with directions. The meeting will be at 8am don't be late Naruto. Naruto nodded and he and Kakashi left once they were out of the building Kakashi nodded his farewell and they went their separate ways. Naruto was deep in thought as he was heading to the Namika's compound and decided he better tell Hiruzen the whole truth so he would have the freedom to deal with Madara. 
With that thought in mind he checked his surroundings once he was sure no wood was around, he shunshined back to the Hokage's office, causing Hiruzen to tense and prepare for an attack until he saw it was Naruto, then he relaxed. Naruto don't do that if my Anbu had been here you'd be dead. Naruto gave a sheepish laugh and shook his head in the negative. Nah I can't die Gigi. Hiruzen gave Naruto a puzzled look, so before he explained further he used his ascended senses to make sure no one could hear their conversation, once he was sure no one was around to hear he continued. What I told you earlier was a cover story, the part about Kamiko-chan being innocent was true, but not about my training. You see I'm a 1236-year-old immortal version of Naruto Uzumaki from the future who came back and took over my younger self to prevent a catastrophe. You see in my timeline Madara gathered all of the tailed beasts and attempted to put the world under an internal Jinjutsu, I attacked him right before it took effect and it blew up in my face. Somehow I absorbed the blast, but it destroyed that universe, I was thrown into the in-between a space between realities where ascended beings live. I found out that as a result of absorbing the blast I was now one of them, but my original universe was destroyed everything and everyone in it just gone. I almost broke when I learned that, but after a while I decided to explore the other universes to train and get stronger, so something like that would never happen to my loved ones again. For 1200 years I explored, battled, loved and trained to be stronger. I am invulnerable literally, even if Madara set off another blast like that it wouldn't kill me just this universe, but I'm not going to let that happen, I came back here to save those I lost and help make things better. Hiruzen had never heard anything like that in his life, but from the sheer determination and power in Naruto's eyes, he could tell he was telling the truth, so he chose to believe Naruto. That is incredible Naruto, but why tell me this? Naruto gave him a gentle smile. Because you always were a grandfather to me and I trust you, also I want to give you a gift. Hiruzen smiled at his words and nodded. Naruto motioned Hiruzen to get up, once he was up Naruto clasped forearms with him in a brother's handshake, and then his eyes flashed a powerful red for a split second, followed by a bright red flash, almost like a flash tag had been set off. When the flash disappeared there stood a 20-year-old looking Hiruzen in perfect health. Hiruzen gasped and stepped back, then looked at his hands in wonder, then ran over and looked in a mirror while touching his face. This is amazing what did you do Naruto? Naruto chuckled and started explaining. It's one of my ascended abilities, it lets me form bonds with people the one I did with you was a family bond. You're immortal now but only in this universe and have a couple of my minor abilities, such as being able to control your age and double the chakra reserves also if you run out it won't kill you, and you have an accelerated healing factor, but you're not invulnerable like me and can be killed if injured bad enough. Here is in gaped in wonder at that and concentrated for a second, and sure enough he looked 70 again, then he reverted to his 20-year-old self and back to 70, then turned to Naruto with a beaming smile. Thank you Naruto this is an amazing gift. Naruto nodded with a smile of his own, then spoke. I'm glad to do it Jiji, but obviously you can't tell anyone about this, and you'll have to retire from public eye in a decade or so, then you can revert to your younger self and disappear to do whatever you want you have an eternity now after all. Hiruzen thought for a second, then nodded his agreement with that it was an amazing idea. All the possibilities a fresh start and a peaceful life just like I've always wanted. Naruto then got a serious expression on his face, making Hiruzen come out of his musings and pay attention. Gigi I need to ask a favor. Hiruzen nodded after the gift Naruto just gave him he'd do anything within reason. I need you to let me handle anything to do with the Jinchurikis on my own, if I need to or with backup, I need that freedom, so I can throw a wrench in Madara's plan, since I don't know where he is then the best option would be to gather as many Jinchurikis as possible, and have them join my clan or Kanoha or at least ally with us. Hiruzen thought it over and it made sense so he nodded. Okay Naruto I'll have Jiraiya keep an eye out for anything to do with the Jinchurikis or Madara and let you know when anything comes up so we can act according to your discretion. After Naruto's story about what happened in his timeline on top of proof of his words by giving him his gift, Hiruzen wasn't going to doubt Naruto and would follow his lead while dealing with Madara. On top of that at 1200 years old Naruto was now technically his senior and he realized Naruto probably had an immense amount of experience. Naruto nodded his thanks with a smile and was about to go see his new compound, but Hiruzen stopped him. Naruto what's the real reason you're staying at Genin? Naruto thought about it then answered. Love and friends, I want to get to know them again and hopefully find a few wives along the way, since I know the craw is coming into effect tomorrow. Hiruzen nodded and bid Naruto a good night and thanked him sincerely for his gift. After Naruto left the Hokage Tower he stopped by the grocery store and stocked up on about a month's worth of food and sealed it in a scroll for easier carrying he'd become adequate at seals over the years, but nowhere near his father's level, and was hoping he could remedy that with his father's notes and a time dilation field then swiftly made his way towards the Namika's compound. 
When he arrived he was greeted with a beautiful large two-story five-bedroom house. He cut his finger which quickly healed and smeared some blood on the seal, causing the gate to swing open. The property was big enough to build a decent-sized compound to house clan members around the house, and thanks to the seal was well kept. He made his way inside and was greeted with an amazing interior tastefully decorated. It had five rooms and a big kitchen, he noticed one of the rooms was an office library. He looked around and found a big safe with another blood seal on it, he opened it and found all his dad's notes on sealing jutsu along with a Horatian and smiled. Using his ascended ability and a dozen clones he read all the notes in about 10 minutes, then he dispelled the clones to gain their memories. Then went out back to the fairly big backyard and made 300 extra strong cage bunshin, using some more of his ascended powers and put them under a time dilation field for one month for them, which was a few minutes for him and everything outside the field. When it dropped the clones looked battered and withered, and the field behind the house looked slightly overgrown and beaten up some of the trees had craters in them, and so did the ground from all the practice. He dispelled the clones and only stayed conscious because of his physiology and experience with information overload. After assimilating all the information, he smirked and disappeared with a tinge of black lightning and reappeared on the other side of the field. Haha this is awesome my dad was a genius, but my clones managed to make the Horatian work not just with seals, but on line of sight and memory. The tested further he Horatian to the Hokage Mountain and back without seals or hand signs. I think I'll call it the Shoten Horatian, Ascended Flying Thunder God. You really are amazing lover to master and even improve the Horatian in only a month, even if you were using 300 clones, I think you need a reward. Kumiko purred over the link. Naruto grinned a goofy grin and headed back inside the house. He had some dinner took a shower, then climbed in bed and went to his mindscape to enjoy a night of fun with his vixen. What greeted him was Kumiko half-naked on the bed in the mindscape the sight caused him to blush before he moved in. Hello Kumiko-chan. He said as he trailed kisses down her neck causing her to gasp in pleasure. Before long the two lovers tired themselves out and fell asleep with smiles on their faces. Next time on. A Beast Comes Home Chapter 5, Interlude to Mist, Man. Chapter 5, this chapter is going to be a setup chapter for the team placements and the wave arch. Next morning, 6 a.m. Naruto woke up on the bed in his mindscape with a naked Kumiko snuggled into his chest. He looked down and chuckled at the fact that Abiju was using him as a pillow. He leaned down and trailed kisses across her face, making her stir and wake with a sleepy smile. I could get used to waking up to that, you are amazing lover. She spoke and snuggled into his chest with a content sigh. Ah me too, waking up to one of my loves in my arms is always the best, but I've got to get up and get ready for the council meeting. Kumiko gave a cute pout but nodded and kissed Naruto before letting him up. Naruto gave her a smile and one more kiss before he faded from his mindscape back to the real world. Naruto opened his eyes back in the real world and looked around his new room with a smile he was to be officially announced as a clan head today. Naruto got out of his bed and had some breakfast before occupying his time with some of his father's notes on the Horatian, even if he had mastered and improved it, there was still always more to do. Before long 7.30 rolled around and it was time to get ready for the meeting. He stood from the table and made a few clones to clean up, then snapped his fingers and was dressed in the same outfit he was during the exams complete with his Zampakuto. He made his way out the door and walked in the direction of the council chambers at the Hukage mansion, he could have used a Shunshin or even his Shoten Horatian, but he had 30 minutes and didn't see a need to rush, so he walked there the civilian way. 30 minutes later he was at the door to the council chamber and opened the door to see the full shinobi council about to begin the meeting. So he walked in and found a seat which drew puzzled looks from most who were wondering why he was there. Hiruzen nodded to Naruto with a smile, then cleared his throat to begin. I call this meeting today to announce that a clan head has been found for two of our clans that were thought extinct. The new clan head is none other than Naruto Uzumaki. This drew a shocked gasp from some of the shinobi present. Then Shikaku asked a question. You said he is going to be head of two clans. What's the name of the second clan the Uzumaki clan is obvious, although most of us had assumed it was just a name that was given to him, since he was an orphan. Hiruzen nodded and motioned Naruto to elaborate Naruto stood and spoke. My parents were Kashina Uzumaki and the fourth Hokage Minato Namikas, so the second clan would be the Namikazes which my father made a clan a short time before his death. This caused all of them there to widen their eyes and some to gasp in shock, even Hiashi's eyes noticeably widened at this. Chikaku was the first to speak. I can't believe no ever noticed, but take away the whisker marks, and you are a younger carbon copy of your father. The rest of the shinobi council all had a look of realization on their faces. Naruto gave them a moment to process that and continued. And seeing as how I'm the last of two clans the restrictions on age and rank no longer apply to me. This caused the council to deliberate for a few minutes, then nod their agreement it was true after all. Tsu Minyazuka leader of the Inyazuka clan, Kiba's mother a beautiful but somewhat wild-looking woman in her thirties spoke first. 
we agree you will be made a clan head, however due to your status as the last known heir of two clans, the Kra Clan Restoration Act will be put into effect on you. Meaning you will have to have at least 10 or more wives by the age of 25. Naruto nodded with a smile for her which surprisingly made her blush a little before he spoke. I know I did my research and knew that it would most likely be put in place when I took my position as a clan head. Everyone gave nods, but before they could say anything more Naruto turned to Hiashi with a serious look on his face. Hiashi noticing this met Naruto's gaze and was startled for a second at the power in Naruto's eyes, although he didn't show it. Hiashi sama I would like to ask for permission to date your daughter Hinata, assuming she is willing with the Kra and all that. Hiashi's eyes widened in surprise at that as did the rest of the councils and the Hokages, then he began to think it over. He is the head of the Uzumaki and Namika's clans he would make a fine husband for Hinata even under the Kra, assuming of course he isn't a weakling and she agrees. After a couple seconds of pondering Hiashi spoke. If you can prove you can protect her and she agrees I'll allow it. Naruto nodded with a smile, then turned to Hiruzen. Giji can you show him my exam scores from yesterday? Hiruzen nodded, then ruffled through his papers and handed the copy to an aide who promptly gave it to Hiashi. Hiashi took the folder and as he read it his eyes bulged and he gave a choked gasp and stared in shock at the Naruto scores. The rest of the council were shocked at the normally stoic Hayuga's reaction, meanwhile the Hokage had to suppress a snicker at his reaction after a few seconds Tsum spoke up. Out with it what does it say Hiashi? Hiashi snapped out of his daze and stared at Naruto for a second before answering. He got an S average on all four tests. Toza the head of the Akamichi clan spoke up. So that's not unheard of for a genin. The Ashi shook his head in the negative, why lying Naruto carefully and spoke again. He got an S average on the Jonin scale for all four tests and even displayed a cage level lightning jutsu and two Jonin level kinjutsu, all three of which he apparently invented himself. This drew wide-eyed looks of amazement from the shinobi council. The four Inoichi the head of the Yamanaka spoke. That shouldn't be possible for an academy student. This drew nods of agreement from everybody then the Hokage spoke. Kakashi verified it himself with his Sharingan during all four tests. The council members were surprised at this, but after a few seconds nodded their agreement that it had to be the truth, since Kakashi used his Sharingan to verify it. Naruto chuckled at their reaction, then turned to Hiashi with an expectant look on his face. Hiashi locked eyes with Naruto and nodded. You have my permission to date my daughter as long as she agrees. Naruto smiled with a nod and a mental reminder to find Hinata and tell her as soon as possible. After giving everyone a minute to process everything here is in spoke. Okay that is what I called everyone here today for, we will make an announcement to the civilian side of the council tomorrow, and since he is still technically a genin if only in formality. Naruto won't be taking a general seat on the shinobi council until he is at least a Takubetsu jonin. Everyone nodded at that since the minimum requirement for a general seat on the council was that rank. Meaning that Naruto would only be required to attend important meetings or ones that directly affected him and or his clan until he acquired it. Hiruzen looked everyone over, then nodded. If no one has any other issues then this meeting is adjourned. Everyone nodded and started making their way out of the council chambers. Once everyone else was gone Naruto approached Hiruzen with a smile. Well Jiji that went better than expected. Hiruzen smiled back and nodded. Yes it did you even manage to get Hiashi's permission to date his daughter impressive. Naruto grinned. Yeah as long as she agrees, I knew he would once he knew my heritage and that I can take care of her. Hiruzen nodded, then Naruto leaned in and spoke in his ear. The walls have eyes Jiji, and I smell a one-armed rat. Hiruzen widened his eyes, then he calmed down and nodded. So it is Danzo who is sending these spies I had my suspicions, but hope they were false, I'll have my anvil look closer. Naruto stepped back and nodded his goodbye to Hiruzen, then focused on Hinata's chakra signature with his ascended senses and disappeared leaving behind a tinge of black lightning. Hiruzen spluttered when he saw Naruto disappear in what was obviously the Horatian and an improved one no less. He then chuckled for a few seconds before heading back to his office with a smile. You would be proud Minato. He then frowned in thought. It is going to be one hell of a meeting tomorrow when we announce his new status to the civilian side of the council. In a clearing a little ways from the Hyuga compound, 9 am. Naruto appeared with a small tinge of black lightning a little ways away from where he could sense Hinata was training. You're finally going to start a relationship with her after 1200 years Naruto-kun aren't you excited? Kamiko said over the bond. Yeah I am, but I'm also nervous she'll reject me. Naruto had been harboring feelings for Hinata for 1200 years from his perspective. He had always liked her as a friend, but when Pain attacked the village and she had confessed her love while protecting him, those feelings had blossomed into love, but he never got much of a chance to act before the final battle with Madara and his ascension. So to finally have another chance with her he was excited and extremely nervous. Makes sense but she won't Naruto-kun she loves you as much as me, and she will accept this, even though she'll have to share you because of the Kra, you won't neglect any of us, so it will be fine. 
Kumiko replied. Naruto nodded in agreement with that he would never neglect any of his loved ones. So he made his way into the clearing, then cleared his throat to get her attention. Hinata had been sitting down up against a tree taking a break from her practice and wasn't using her byakugan when he had appeared, so she jumped at the sound and turned to look at him. When she saw who it was she blushed cutely and spoke. Then Naruto-kun w what are you doing here? Naruto chuckled at her cuteness, then gave a gentle smile and moved to sit next to her making her blush further. I need to tell you a few things about myself then ask you a question. Hinata nodded and waited to hear what he had to say. First off my parents were Kashina Yuzumaki and the fourth Hokage Minato Namikas. Hinata's eyes bulged at this information, but she nodded knowing there was more to what he had to say. Twelve years ago the Kaiubi was forced to attack our village by someone controlling her, my parents were killed during the attack, and my father was forced to seal the Kaiubi and me a newborn. That's why some of the villagers hate me so much. Hinata's eyes widened in realization. That's why they all tried to hurt Imo Naruto-kun. She moved forward surprising Naruto and embraced him in a gentle hug. Naruto smiled and wrapped his arms around her, then positioned them so she was sitting in his lap with his back up against the tree. Hinata noticed this and blushed furiously at her position. Naruto smiled at her and continued. Today I was made head of the Uzumaki and Namika's clans, but the craw was forced into place on me, meaning I need at least 10 wives by the age of 25. Hinata gasped a bit at this she had learned of the craw during her training as the Hayuga heir. Naruto looked her in the eyes with a sincere expression. Hinata-chan I've had a crush on you for a while now and now that I'm a clan head I got your father's permission to date you if you wanted to. So my question is if you would be my girlfriend to spite Kumiko-chan and having to share me. At his words Hinata's heart skipped a beat and her face was almost cherry red. Naruto-kun likes me. And is asking me to be his girlfriend. Please don't let this be a dream. Hinata only stayed conscious through sheer force of will, then she began to think. Can I share him? Well I suppose if I like the other girls it wouldn't be so bad it would be like having sisters, so I guess have my answer then. Hinata smiled a small smile and nodded then spoke. Why yes Naruto-kun I w would love to be your girlfriend since I've had a crush on you for a while as well and as long as I like them, I wouldn't mind other girls. She blushed more at her own words, then her breath hitched when Naruto tightened his grip and pulled her closer until their noses were touching. When he spoke it made her shiver because she could feel his breath on her face. Thank you Hinata-chan for accepting me, and I promise to always protect you. He then closed the rest of the distance and kissed her. Hinata's eyes fluttered closed and she melted into the kiss. Please Kami don't let this be a dream. She practically screamed in her own head. Since her eyes were closed Hinata didn't notice the bright red flash that signaled the forming of a family bond. Naruto used his control of the bond to lock her age-changing ability for now, he would form a soul bond with her in the next few years, but she wasn't ready for sex as it stood, so he would wait until she was. Until then the family bond would protect her, and he was planning to train her along with breaking her out of her shell. After a solid minute the two ended the kiss panting. Hinata was blushing like crazy, but nonetheless she held onto him and shyly snuggled into his chest while still sitting in his lap. Naruto smiled at the action and began stroking her hair gently while holding her clothes, earning a content sigh from her as Hinata relaxed in his arms before speaking. Then Naruto-kun I feel different more powerful since that kiss. Naruto looked into to her eyes before speaking. Yeah I used a special jutsu Kumiko taught me to form a bond between us, it doubles your chakra reserves and makes you heal faster, but be careful it won't heal you from everything. Hinata's eyes widened at the gift Naruto had given her before she smiled and nodded before to his surprise leaning in and planting a chaste kiss on his lips, when she pulled away she hid her face in his chest with a blush. Naruto chuckled and went back to stroking her hair, earning another content sigh from her as she relaxed in his arms. This continued for a few minutes as the two enjoyed the cuddling, but then Hinata remembered something he said. Naruto-kun who is Kumiko? She wasn't mad just curious she had agreed to share him after all. Naruto chuckled he figured she'd ask that. Kumiko is the Kaiubi's actual name. At Hinata's incredulous look he explained about Madara controlling Kumiko and causing her to attack the village and kill one of her best friends his mother. At the end of the story Hinata had tears in her eyes, and Naruto could tell through the bond Kumiko was beginning to care for Hinata even more after her reaction than she already did after everything she had learned of Hinata through Naruto. That's horrible to have everyone think you're a monster and try to control you. Then have one of them force you to kill your best friend. Naruto nodded, then wiped Hinata's tears away with his thumbs before speaking. Yes it is but she is amazing and she is the one who helped me all these years. After getting to know her I fell for her, and she is going to be one of my wives. He could feel Kumiko sending him her love over the bond as she heard what he said. Hinata nodded in understanding she wouldn't mind Kumiko being one of Naruto's wives, after everything she had been through she deserved some happiness. After a few more minutes of cuddling Naruto motioned Hinata to get up, and they both stood. Once they were standing he leaned in and pecked her on the lips, causing her to blush again he chuckled and then spoke. 
How about I help you train? That way you can impress your father and protect yourself better, especially with your new power boost. Naruto was well aware that Hinata would most likely be facing Niji in the Chunin exams in two months and wasn't going to let the same thing happen again. Hinata nodded with a small smile before poking her index fingers together and blushing. Place please Naruto-kun that would be amazing. Naruto nodded and smiled back, for the next three hours he helped his new girlfriend train. Around 1 o'clock Naruto called an end to the training, Hinata had shown quite a bit of improvement even over just the three hours, thanks to the family bond, giving her bigger chakra reserves and Naruto's help. Hinata-chan how about we go get lunch at Ichiraku on me? Hinata nodded and the two headed to the ramen shop, before long the two arrived and Naruto ordered beef ramen, while Hinata ordered vegetable ramen. Naruto having not had Ichiraku's ramen for 1200 years, was actually crying and I'm tears, as he ate 10 bowls in the time it took Hinata to finish one. How does Naruto-kun eat so much? Hinata didn't know if there was an answer to that question, and thought it might have something to do with Kumiko being sealed inside him. After they finished their meal Naruto paid for it, and on their way out, he received a knowing grin from A.M. When they walked out Naruto reached over and took Hinata's hand, causing her to blush with a small smile. He steered them towards the Hyuga compound walking her home. Before long they arrived at the gates luckily without any trouble from any of the villagers, besides the nasty looks they sent at Naruto. Naruto turned and kissed Hinata softly on the lips when he pulled back she had a slight blush, but seemed to already be getting somewhat used to the affection. He smiled at her and rubbed her cheek with his hand, causing her to blush even more. I'll see you tomorrow HIME princess around noon in the same spot and I'll help you train some more, then we'll hopefully have time for another date. Hinata blushed brightly but nodded her head. I see can't wait Naruto-kun. She answered with a small smile, then made her way inside the compound. Naruto watched her go with a smile before disappearing back to his apartment with a tinge of black lightning. Once he was there he quickly packed all his things since he didn't have much, then gave his key to the landlady and thanked her for being nice to him for all those years. She was sad to see him go, but when he told her that his parents had left him a house she hugged him with a smile, wished him luck and let him go. It was around 8 pm and he was on his way home with all his belongings sealed in scrolls when he sensed two chakra signatures quite a ways outside of the village and immediately recognized both of them. Looks like that bastard Mizuki stole the scroll himself and Aruka sensei must have noticed. Knowing Aruka would most likely need help Naruto disappeared in a tinge of black lightning. When he arrived it was just in time to see Mizuki throw one of his fuma shuriken at Aruka. Seeing Aruka wouldn't have time to dodge Naruto blurred in front of him while drawing his zanpakuto with his right hand. He cut the shuriken cleanly in two with his sword, the two halves falling to the sides harmlessly. Mizuki and Aruka were both stunned by his appearance and before they could do anything Naruto spoke. Mizuki return the forbidden scroll and make this easy on yourself, you'll stand trial for your betrayal of Konoha and attempted murder of a fellow Konoha shinobi. Aruka knowing Naruto's exam scores knew he could handle Mizuki but was still afraid for Naruto's safety. Mizuki laughed a cold sadistic laugh before speaking. Why if it isn't the demon brat come to try and stop me, you weakling. Apparently Mizuki hadn't heard of his exam scores. Aruka's eyes widened at that Mizuki no it was forbidden by the Hokage. Before Mizuki could continue trying to break Naruto by telling him of the Kaiubi Naruto began laughing, causing them both to look at him confused. Oh Mizuki you poor ignorant fool I've known about Kumiko-chan since I was seven she is no demon, she was forced to attack the village 12 years ago, and if you look at the record she has never attacked anywhere without either being provoked or controlled. Haruka went wide-eyed at this information while Mizuki gritted his teeth in anger. It doesn't matter you die here tonight brat, Hirachimaru-sama will reward me handsomely for your head. Mizuki yelled as he launched his other Fuma shuriken at Naruto. Naruto reached out and caught it with his left hand, then snapped it in half like a twig with a flick of his wrist while sheathing his sword on his back. Mizuki and Aruka couldn't believe their eyes, and before he could do anything else Naruto disappeared and reappeared behind Mizuki with a tinge of black lightning. Once he was behind Mizuki he stomped the back of first his left then right legs with his right foot, breaking both of Mizuki's legs like twigs, causing Mizuki to howl in pain and fall to his knees before Naruto knocked him out with a chop to the back of the neck. Naruto then took the forbidden scroll and strapped it to his back before turning to Aruka, who had a stunned look on his face. Aruka-sensei are you okay? We better take him to the Hokage and report this as well as return the scroll. Aruka snapped out of daze and nodded before speaking. You're right and thank you Naruto you saved my life. Naruto nodded with a smile and created two cage bunshin to carry Mizuki with them to the Hokage mansion. As they were walking Aruka couldn't help but ask. Naruto was what you said about the Kaiubi being forced to attack Konoha true. And why did you call it Kimiko? Naruto placed a sound suppression seal around them in a bubble while they walked so no one would hear them and explained about the Kaiubi and how her name was Kumiko and she had a human form which she preferred to her Biju form and that she had always been attacked for just existing. 
people just assumed she was evil and attacked her to kill her for power. Then he explained that a masked Chiha that claimed to be Madara had forced her to attack the village with his Sharingan and that she in fact liked the village and in the process, she killed one of her best friends his mother. He told Aruka how Kumiko was locked in his seal for years blaming herself, then went on to explain who his parents were and how he was now a clan head and had the crop placed on him. So after she helped me all these years without me knowing and then getting to know her while she trained me, we fell for each other and she agreed to be one of my wives, even if we might never be able to be a couple in public. Aruka after hearing the whole story was shocked and appalled at the way Kimiko was treated and his hate for the Kaiubi moved to hate for the masked man that claimed to be Madara, the real reason the village was attacked when he realized Kimiko was just as much a victim as him. Then when he heard how they fell in love he actually sniffled a little bit knowing she had watched over Naruto all these years and would now be his wife actually made Aruka happy for them both. I'm so proud of you Naruto you've gotten so strong and I want you to know I'm happy for you and Kimiko now that I know the truth. Aruka said with a smile. Naruto smiled back and spoke. Thank you Aruka-sensei that means a lot to me and Kumiko-chan. They then finally reached the village gates and made their way to the Hokage mansion, luckily the Hokage was there late doing paperwork. When he learned what Mizuki had done and why he immediately called an Anbu to take him to INT. He thanked Naruto and Aruka for their help and the return of the scroll, then marked it as a B-rank mission on Naruto's record and paid him for it. Naruto thanked Hiruzen with a smile and he and Aruka left. Before they went their separate ways after leaving the Hokage mansion Aruka offered to buy Naruto Raymond, since he hadn't had the chance to take him out for any yet like he said he would the day before, and of course, since Naruto had saved his life. Naruto never wanted to turn down Raymond of course accepted, and the two had a nice meal together before they went their separate ways and headed home. The next five days leading up to team placements was a dream come true for Naruto. After Harazin had revealed his true heritage along with his clan head status and had sufficiently berated the civilian council for their outburst when he told them it was made public knowledge. Once they learned who he was the villagers looked at Naruto in a whole new light, those who had hated and attempted to beat him now looked away in shame and most of the village now treated him appropriately. During those five days he continued training Hinata and managed to go on a date with her every day. He kept at random taking her to see various sites around the village and different restaurants that he could now afford, thanks to his inheritance. Anada had already come quite a ways from the shy girl she was a week ago, she was still quiet and shy around most people, but when they were alone, she would smile and giggle, which would cause Naruto's heart to flutter. He promised himself that he would see that smile and hear her laugh for the rest of eternity. During one of their dates they had run across Kiba who smiled at their clasped hands, causing Hinata to blush, he congratulated them on their new relationship, along with Naruto on his new status as a clan head, and talked with them for a bit before going on his way, stating he was doing errands for his mother, while mumbling about scary women, causing Naruto to laugh. During those five days when he would get home Naruto used time dilation fields on the whole Namika's compound, set to give him a week in the field, while well, only a few minutes passed outside the compound he used this time to further perfect various techniques and learning and inventing new ones. He may well be an ascended being, but he wasn't omnipresent or omnipotent and was determined to keep getting stronger, so he would always be able to protect his loved ones. Day of the team placements. It was early in the morning and everyone was excited to find out what teams they would be on. Naruto was wearing his now standard outfit he had worn during the exams complete with his Zanpakuto and was wondering if the team placements would be the same or different. Hinata was hoping to be on her boyfriend's team or Kiba's team so she would have a friend on her team. While some of the other students were giving Naruto curious looks after finding out who he was earlier in the week even Sasuke seemed somewhat curious. Before long Aruka made his way to the front of the class and cleared his throat, making the new shinobi quite down. Everyone here is now a proud shinobi of Konoha, I wish you all the best and hope you do our village proud. He gave them a second to process the seriousness of his words before he continued. I will now announce your team placements along with your jonin senseis. And same team placements as canon for everyone. I wanted to keep them the same so Naruto could proceed with his plan to help Sasuke onto a better path and hopefully save him from being corrupted. Team 7. Jonin sensei, Kakashi Haddock. Members are, Sakura Haruno, Sasuke Chiha and Naruto Uzumaki. While Naruto was the clan head of the Namikas and Uzumaki clans he had chosen to keep his mother's last name, so he didn't have to change it. Sakura who had cheered at being placed on the same team as Sasuke, simply gave Naruto a curious look after the exams, she really didn't know what to think of him anymore, and he had apparently just been pretending to have a crush on her, which kind of pissed her off, but she would hold off on her judgment until she got to know the real him. Sasuke surprisingly turned and gave Naruto a nod of respect. 
after he had learned who Naruto was and seen firsthand what he was capable of during the exam Sasuke had come to somewhat respect Naruto, besides deception was the shinobi's greatest tool, and Naruto had used it splendidly, so Sasuke didn't mind having Naruto as a teammate. Naruto returned Sasuke's nod, then looked beside him to his left and noticed Hinata looked somewhat depressed that she wasn't on Naruto's team. He smiled at her cute pouting expression and leaned in and pecked her cheek, causing her to blush before he spoke in her ear. It's okay Hinata-chan I'll still help you train whenever we can and we'll still have plenty of dates that's a promise and I never break my promises. Besides you have the necklace I gave you and if you ever need my help just put some chakra into it and I'll be there in a flash. During the five days he had been training and dating her, he had revealed his mastery of the Horation, much to her shock and awe. He had gifted her with a necklace that had the seal for the Horation on it as an extra precaution. Because of the family bond he gave her no suppression seal or anything for that matter, could block him from flashing to her side in an instant, but he wasn't going to take any chances, so he gifted her the necklace just in case. Anada smiled back and nodded before leaning in and pecking him on the cheek as well causing her to blush even more. Naruto and Kiba who as usual was to Hinata's left, chuckled at her, although Kiba was curious about what they said about her necklace, but figured it was just Naruto protecting Hinata, and he was happy about that, and figured Hinata would explain if it was important. Iruka continued down the list. Teammate. Jonin Sensei, Kurana Yuhi. Members are, Shino Aburam, Hinata Hayuga and Kiba Inuzuka. And. I'll skip the rest since they're the same as canon. Kiba smiled when he heard this, and Akamaru gave a happy yip from his spot on Kiba's head. Hinata smiled as well because she had her friend Kiba on her team and wouldn't be put on a team with nothing but strangers. The two turned and gave Shino a nod who was a couple seats away, which he returned as impassively as usual. After Aruka was done all the Jonin senseis entered the classroom one by one and retrieved their teams to go off and get to know each other, all except of course Kakashi who was nowhere to be seen. As she was leaving with her team Naruto gave Hinata a hug and kiss on the cheek and told her he'd see her later causing Kurinai to smile at the cute young couple. Hinata sure is lucky to have Naruto. She thought to herself as they left. Once everyone was gone Naruto threw his feet up on his desk and leaned back in his chair while pulling some advanced few in jutsu, sealing jutsu. Notes from a storage seal he had on him to pass the time before Kakashi arrived. After about two hours Sakura groaned and spoke. What could be taking our sensei so long? Sasuke who had been deep in thought shook his head and replied. Who knows he is a jonin so it could be anything. Sakura smiled at him and replied. You're right Sasuke-kun. Sasuke ignored her fangirl ways and went back to his thoughts. Causing Sakura to pout at him not talking to her further. Naruto silently chuckled at their antics and continued reading his notes. About 30 minutes later the door to the classroom opened and in walked Kakashi. Sakura huffed at him before speaking. You're late sensei. Sasuke nodded his agreement with her and Naruto chuckled dryly at his old sensei's tardiness habit before nodding his agreement as well. Kakashi sheepishly rubbed the back of his head with a small chuckle while speaking. Yeah sorry about that, but something came up, anyways meet me on the roof for a team meeting and introductions. He said before swirling away to the roof in a leaf shunshun. The three of them stood and quickly made their way to the roof for the meeting, they arrived and found seats on the steps. Once they were seated Kakashi began. Okay now for introductions I'll go first, so you guys have an idea of what to do. My name is Kakashi Haddock I don't really feel like telling you my likes and dislikes. As for my dreams for the future I've never really thought about it. Okay now your turns. The three sweat dropped he had really only told them his name. Naruto chuckled in his own head this was all so nostalgic for him going through it again. Naruto decided he'd go first. My name is Naruto Uzumaki I was recently made head of my parents two clans. My likes are my girlfriend Hinata, Raymond and training to get stronger. My dislikes are those who abandon or betray their friends and family along with anybody who tries to hurt those I care about. My dream for the future is to be Hokage and have a big loving family along with rebuilding my clan. Kakashi nodded at him while Sasuke and Sakura gave him contemplative looks while considering his words. Kakashi turned to Sakura. You're next. Sakura nodded and thought for a second before speaking. My name is Sakura Haruno. My likes are here she glanced at Sasuke before continuing. And getting noticed by a certain someone here she glanced at Sasuke again. My dislikes are here she paused before seeing his exam scores and new attitude, she would have answered Naruto. I have to agree with Naruto's dislikes. After hearing what he said she agreed with him. My dream for the future is to be a great Kanoichi and to get married and have a family. Her cheeks colored a bit at the last part. Bakashi nodded, then motioned Sasuke to finish. Sasuke took a second to think as well. My name is Sasuke Uchiha I'm the heir to the Uchiha clan. My likes are training and getting stronger. My dislikes are many, but I also have to agree with Naruto. My dream for the future is to avenge my clan and rebuild it. Bakashi nodded his understanding, then spoke. 
Okay now that that is over you are to meet me at the third training grounds tomorrow morning for a survival test to see if you're actually worthy of becoming Genin, and if you fail, you'll be sent back to the academy. Sasuke and Sakura went wide-eyed at this, while Naruto remained impassive then Kakashi continued. That's all dismissed, oh and don't eat breakfast tomorrow, you'll just end up puking. With that he vanished in a leaf shunshin. Naruto then stood and turned to Sasuke and Sakura. Well I'll see you guys tomorrow for the test, later. He then vanished in his fire and lightning shunshin to their shock. After recovering they both went their separate ways determined not to fail tomorrow's test. The next day 6am, the third training ground. Sasuke and Sakura arrived at the same time and Naruto and Kakashi were nowhere in sight, so they sat down under a tree to wait. A few minutes later Naruto arrived via his shunshin and walked over and sat beside them with a full stomach, knowing Kakashi would be late. After a few minutes he turned to them and spoke. So I'm pretty sure the point of this test is actually teamwork not survival. He'll probably make some stuff up to try and divide us or make us argue. So I suggest that while we wait for him we work out a plan to pass the test together. Sakura and Sasuke thought it over and both nodded they were supposed to be a team after all, so what Naruto said made sense. So while they were waiting they came up with a plan and worked out some signals, but since only Naruto knew what the test would be and couldn't tell them they could only work out a basic plan and signal system. At about 9am Kakashi finally showed up, causing Sakura to huff before she spoke. You're late again sensei. Kakashi chuckled sheepishly at her. Yes yeah, sorry but a black cat crossed my path so I took the long way around. They shrugged off his excuse and all three stood to get ready for the test. After a few seconds Kakashi began by pulling out two bells. Okay the test will be that you each have until noon to take one of these bells from me, you'll have to come at me with intent to kill to get them those who don't get one fail the test and don't get lunch. He motioned to three nearby posts and continued. You'll be tied to those posts and I'll eat my lunch in front of you. Sakura pointed out the obvious. But sensei there are only two bells. Kakashi nodded and replied. Yes no matter what one of you will be sent back to the academy, of course all three of you could fail and be sent back. He let that sink in, then placed a timer on the middle post set to noon and turned back to them. Begin. At this they all scattered but regrouped a ways away to plan, when they regrouped Sasuke spoke first. You were right Naruto this test is designed to divide us, and your scores aside three genin wouldn't have a chance to get those bells from a jonin, so this is about teamwork. Sakura nodded in agreement so the three of them began to plan. Meanwhile Kakashi was standing in the clearing waiting on their first move he was completely on guard, having seen Naruto's exam in person, then his display against the spy in the Hokage's office, he wasn't taking any chances. I can't let my guard down against him he is basically a green jonin, I wonder if he figured out the point of this test, he didn't seem to bother by anything I said, oh well I'll have to wait and see how they all do. After thinking about it the three of them decided they would all attack together, and Naruto being the strongest would fight him head on, while Sakura and Sasuke distracted him, so Naruto could take the bells with a clone. With their plan in mind the three of them moved in on Kakashi. Naruto blurred towards him and led with a strong right kick that reminded Kakashi of Guy's dynamic entry. Kakashi side stepped the kick, but before he could counter he had to dodge a barrage of shuriken from Sasuke and Sakura. Not giving Kakashi any time to formulate a plan Naruto blurred towards Kakashi again at high jonin speeds, causing Kakashi's eyes to widen, and he threw a hard straight right punch that Kakashi barely ducked under. The resulting shockwave of the punch was massive and uprooted some trees causing Sasuke and Sakura's jaws to drop at the power behind it. Kakashi was so stunned he didn't notice a clone Naruto had created earlier that had snuck up behind him and swiped both bells from his belt, the clone them shunshined beside Naruto and gave him the bells. Kakashi jumped back from Naruto to gain some distance and recover from his shock. That punch reminded me of Tsunade Sama, just what is this kitty is already Jonin level, and he has monster strength and speed that reminds me of his father. He was brought out of his thoughts when he saw the clone appear beside Naruto and give him both bells, he landed a few feet away and stared at Naruto in amazement before checking his belt and sure enough they were gone. Naruto chuckled at Kakashi's expression, then turned to Sasuke and Sakura, who were both still stunned by his display of strength and spoke. Sasuke Sakura catch. As he threw them both a bell with a grin. His voice snapped them out of their shock and they both caught a bell each. Sakura was the first to speak. Thank you Naruto. While well, Sasuke nodded his thanks with a small smile surprising Naruto and Sakura. Naruto shook off his surprise and turned back to Kakashi who was still too stunned to speak and spoke with a grin and explained. After I went home yesterday I thought it out and figured this was actually a test of teamwork, so this morning when we all met up I told Sasuke and Sakura my suspicions and they agreed, so we worked out a basic plan. Then when you told us there were only two bells we realized you were trying to divide us, so when the test began we regrouped and agreed that it was a test of teamwork, since my scores aside no genin could be expected to get those bells off a jonin by themselves. 
So we came up with the plan of me getting the bells with a clone while fighting you head on and having Sasuke and Sakura provide a distraction to help me. So do we pass Kakashi Sensei. It took him a minute to contemplate that, but after he thought about he gave them an eye smile and spoke. Brilliant you three, especially you Naruto. In the shinobi world those who abandon the mission are trash, but those who abandon their teammates and friends are lower than trash. He gave them all a second to let those words sink in then said. Congratulations you all pass. Naruto smiled with a nod while Sakura jumped for joy and Sasuke nodded with a small smile as well. Two weeks later. It had been a busy two weeks for Naruto and his team. They had been training and doing D-ranked missions almost every day and had started to really come together as an excellent team. During training Naruto would help them with tips and push them to do better they had even learned tree walking which Naruto already knew and helped them with. Surprisingly due to his attitude of not looking down on them or acting better than despite his obvious skill level Sakura and Sasuke took well to Naruto's help and even thanked him for it. Naruto had become the unofficial second in command of Team 7 ride under Kakashi during those two weeks of training and missions. During those two weeks the three became fairly fast friends and with some prodding from Naruto Sasuke had come out of his brooding ways somewhat and loosened up a bit. Sakura had also started coming out of her fangirl tendencies and began training hard with the rest of her team. When he wasn't with his team on missions or training Naruto would help train and go out on dates with Hinata whenever they both had the time. Along with studying more jutsu when he went home and spending wonderful time with Kumiko exploring each other every night in his mindscape. He had also met the Hokage's grandson Konohamaru when he busted into the Hokage's office one day when Naruto was there, he had become friends with Konohamaru and played ninja with him and his friends whenever he had the time Hinata and Kiba had even joined in one day. Currently they were in the mission assignment room waiting on the Hokage to assign them a new mission, but before he could Naruto stepped forward. Giji we're ready for something harder we can handle it. Here is in knowing the truth about Naruto looked over the rest of his team and received firm nods from all of them, so he nodded. Okay Naruto I'll give you and your team a seer rank escort mission to the land of waves. He then motioned an aide to bring in the client. The Zuna a bridge builder from the land of waves walked into the room. He was an average looking older man with gray hair a beard and glasses who stood about 5'8 and was a little overweight. He was wearing a dark v-neck sleeveless shirt and dark shorts with sandals and a straw hat as well as a backpack. This is what I get a jonin and a couple wee kids. He spoke while chugging sake from a bottle. Naruto ignored him having gone through this last time. While Sasuke and Sakura had annoyed expressions on their faces. Before the situation got out of hand Kakashi stepped forward and spoke. I assure you that my team is capable enough to get you home safely. Azuna scoffed and slurred a bit. W will see. He then introduced himself and explained that he hired them to escort him home so he could finish a bridge and guard him on the way there from bandits etc all in all a totally normal C rank mission. After the explanation Kakashi nodded and turned to his team. Okay we'll meet at the village gates in an hour pack for a week long trip. They all nodded and split up to go pack. Naruto had his gear packed in 10 minutes and went and said goodbye to Hinata who as luck would have it was home at the time. He explained that he would be gone for a week and that he would see her when he got back he kissed her firmly on the lips before he left causing her to blush and nod her goodbye while telling him to be careful. An hour later they all met up at the gates and after Kakashi checked their supplies they moved out. Chapter 5 End. Midway between Kanoha and Wave, 11 AM. It had been around two hours since Team 7 had left Kanoha on their first sea rank mission. They were all on guard for bandits and the like as they were walking at a civilian pace while escorting Tazuna. They were in a diamond formation with Tazuna in the center Naruto in the lead Sasuke to the left Sakura to the right and Kakashi bringing up the rear. Naruto knowing the demon brothers would ambush them had already found them lying in wait a few meters ahead using his ascended senses. Using one of the sign systems they had worked out, he signaled the rest of his team that two ninja were nearby waiting to ambush them. Sakura and Sasuke discreetly signaled back confirming they were on guard, Kakashi signaled back telling them to wait and see who the ninja's target was. They signaled Kakashi that they understood and proceeded to walk past the demon brothers who were disguised as a puddle. As Kakashi passed the puddle the brothers made their move and used their chain to cut what they thought was Kakashi to shreds. The brothers smiled under their masks at their handiwork and one proclaimed. One down. The two then raced at Naruto attempting to do the same to him. Naruto blurred between the men using his Zanpakuto, he cut the chain in half like it was paper. The two stumbled a bit but quickly regained their footing and deciding that they'd better end their target while well, they had the chance charge towards Tazuna intending on killing him. Sasuke ready to kunai and leaped into action parrying the one-horned brother's claws with it. The other brother figuring Sasuke would fall in no time charged at Sakura who was guarding Tazuna with a determined look on her face. She managed to parry his first strike with a kunai but the second grazed her forearm causing a small gash. She gritted her teeth in pain but ducked under the third strike and jumped back closer to Tazuna. 
Kakashi having seen who they were attacking and not liking the look of Sakura's injury, blurred behind the two-horned brother and swiftly knocked him out, then turned to see how Naruto and Sasuke were taking on the other one. After he severed the chain Naruto sheathed his sword and watched Sasuke fight the first brother. After parrying a few claw strikes Sasuke got inside the brother's guard and gave him a hard kick to the chin, sending him flying back where he landed with a thud. Before he could get up Naruto blurred beside him and gave him a swift punch to the side of the head knocking him out. The four of them and Tazuna regrouped and tied the unconscious brothers to a tree, as Naruto cinched the ropes tight, he placed a chakra suppression seal on them and noticed that just like last time the brothers' claws were coated in poison. He turned and noticed Sakura was sweating an abnormal amount already, and just as she started to fall already unconscious, he blurred beside her and caught her before lowering her gently to the ground. Sasuke who was alarmed to see one of his teammates fall over spoke first. What's wrong what happened to Sakura why did she fall over like that? Naruto could hear a tinge of worry in Sasuke's voice. It's the wound their claws were dipped in poison, but it's okay I know enough medical jutsu to deal with it, she'll be fine. Sasuke nodded and watched as Naruto's hands glowed green, neutralizing the poison before they glowed green, again closing the wound like it was never there. Sakura woke up a few minutes later thank Naruto sincerely for saving her life. The Kashi who was relieved to see Naruto handle the poison and that Sakura was awake, turned to Tazuna and spoke. Pair to tell me why enemy shinobi are after you. Because them being after you changes this mission to a B-rank mission not a C-rank mission like you hired us for. Tazuna gave a resigned sigh before answering. I didn't have the money to hire a B-ranked escort because he then explained everything about Gato and how he was a kingpin and how he was draining wave country dry by having total control over the shipping and transport. So you see the reason he wants me dead is because if I finish the bridge his control over the land of wave will be broken. The Kashi nodded his understanding before turning to his team. Okay team what do you guys say? I know that the three of you have the skills to handle a few enemy shinobi, but you're still technically genin, so I'll leave it up to you whether we continue or not. Naruto nodded and spoke first. What Gato is doing isn't right, and Tazuna said he would have hired the appropriate team for the mission if he could have. So the way I see it we're the only chance him and the land of wave have so I say we go for it. Sasuke and Sakura nodded in agreement with Naruto seeing this Kakashi nodded and turned back to Tazuna. Tazuna seeing them agree to help spoke. Thank you four for agreeing to continue I'll never forget this even if we don't succeed. The four of them nodded and Naruto moved over towards the demon brothers. Everyone was wondering what he was doing and watched as he pulled out a ceiling scroll and sealed them inside. He walked back towards them and noticed their puzzled look so he explained. I sealed them so we could deliver them to the Hokage, they are missing Nin with bounties after all. They all nodded in understanding before Kakashi stepped forward and summoned a small dog, while motioning Naruto to give him the scrolls, once he had them he wrote out a message to the Hokage explaining the situation, and sent the dog to deliver the message and scrolls containing the demon brothers. After the excitement the group continued on their way to Wave, and Wave headed for Tazuna's house. It had been a few hours, and Team 7 and Tazuna had gotten off the boat in the land of Wave a short time ago, and were headed for Tazuna's house. They were in the same formation as before and were even more on guard, knowing the next enemy shinobi would most likely be stronger. Like with the demon brothers Naruto had already located Zabuza lying in wait about 50 meters ahead, and he could sense Haku a little further away, waiting in case Zabuza needed help. Once they closed in to around 25 meters of Zabuza Naruto used the same signals as before to warn his team that there was an enemy up ahead. Naruto had explained to his team that being Kumiko's Jinchuriki gave him some sensor abilities that he had honed through his training, which was partially true, but the bulk of it came from his ascended physiology. Just like before the other two and Kakashi signaled back. After alerting his team Naruto ready to kunai and making sure to throw it slow enough for Zabuza to dodge launched it with pinpoint accuracy straight for his heart. But Zabuza. Zabuza was waiting for the bridge builder and his escort to arrive, knowing the demon brothers had failed because they didn't report in. He caught sight of the four-man team of Konoha Shinobi in a diamond formation around his target with the Jonin towards the rear and almost instantly realized who the Jonin was. The Kashi the copy ninja huh? This job just got a whole lot more interesting and those three genin seem fairly competent as well this should be fun. He thought with a smirk. Before he could plan out how he wanted to attack he noticed a subtle shift in the mood of the escorts and before he could figure out the genin in the lead launched a kunai ride at him at fairly high speed. It was only thanks to his honed reflexes that he reacted in time and dodged. He used a kawarimi, body replacement technique, to switch places with a rabbit he had for that purpose, and the kunai embedded itself in the tree missing the rabbit by centimeters and causing it to flee. From his new position in front of them he decided that he had better not waste any more time if the genin was good enough to find him from that far away and launched his kubakirabacho at them, aiming to cleave them all in two and kill the target. With Team 7. 
After throwing the kunai Naruto signaled his team that the enemy had moved and to be ready for an attack, no sooner had he finished the signs than Zabuza's massive cleaver came sailing towards them at high speed, aimed to cleave them all in two. At down now? Called Kakashi, but Naruto simply drew his Anpakuto in a flash of speed and parried the massive cleaver with one hand, as if he was swatting a fly away, sending it crashing into a tree about 15 feet to his left. Zabuza immediately appeared standing on the handle of his blade, but quickly freed it from the tree and landed on the ground around 15 feet away completely on guard. Something isn't right with that blonde gen and he parried my Kubakirabacha with only one arm and that normal katana. Zabuza would have normally tried to intimidate the three genin to have easier access to his target, but they weren't shaken by his sudden appearance, and the blonde genin was holding himself like an experienced swordsman, so he wasn't going to bother with the mind games as much. The Kashi seeing what happened blurred to Naruto's side and signaled Sasuke and Sakura to guard Tazuna, the two nodded and tightened their formation around Tazuna while readying their kunai. The Kashi looked their enemy over and recognized him easily. Zabuza Mamachi, the demon of the hidden mist. Zabuza turned to Kakashi while still keeping an eye on the blonde that had parried his blade. Kakashi Haddock, the copy ninja. Naruto feeling left out spoke up. And Naruto Uzumaki, the baddest. Everyone sweet dropped at him even Zabuza before he continued. I'm here for the bridge builder Kakashi, if you and your team turn back now I let you live. Before Kakashi could answer him Zabuza felt cold steel at his throat and looked to his side to see Naruto with his blade poised to slit his throat. Everyone was stunned with a show of speed, and no one not even Kakashi or Zabuza had even seen Naruto twitch. Naruto looked Zabuza dead in the eyes before speaking, and it sent a shiver up Zabuza's spine. Zabuza, Gato is using you and he will betray you he's a gangster after all. So my reply for you is leave while you can because if I don't kill you, he will. Naruto had used Shunpo, Flash Step, to appear beside Zabuza, a technique he learned in the Bleach universe, where he got his Aunt Bakudo and met a few wives along the way. This time around he was going to try to save Zabuza and Haku, both of which were affected by Madara, who he knew was currently controlling Yagura and Kiri, and was the reason Zabuza became a missing nin in the first place, and why Haku was the last of her clan. Zabuza chuckled before he disappeared in a puff of smoke, having used the Kawarimi with a nearby log, and reappeared standing on a tree branch with his sword across his shoulders. That was impressive Gaki, but it won't happen again, and I'm sorry, but I can't do that I have a reputation to uphold. But that he blurred away and reappeared standing on the water with his left hand raised and his right hand in front of his face, preparing his hidden miss jutsu. Before he could however Naruto swung his sword horizontally while calling the name of his attack. The Kuho. A three meter wide black and red fire phoenix launched at Zabuza, causing his eyes to widen and making him dodge to his right just nearly escaping in time and thus stopping his jutsu before it could start. The Kashi realizing the battle was on, but knowing Naruto was actually stronger than him from the sparring matches they had had in training over the last two weeks, had moved to guard Tazuna as well, while activating his Sharingan to watch the battle and to be able to see sneak attacks. I feel sorry for Zabuza right now, after sparring with him when we were alone and getting an idea of his actual skill, I couldn't even touch him at my best, the kid is a damned monster just like his father. Kakashi thought with a slight shiver. Sasuke and Sakura were watching the fight in a slight bit of awe at Naruto's display of skill, over the two weeks they had been a team Naruto had quickly become the unofficial second in command of the team and had helped them both during training. They at first were a little put off by his newly revealed skills, but he never acted better than them and always just wanted to honestly help them, so they had warmed up to the new Naruto pretty fast. They had suspected Naruto was holding back during the exams as insane as that sounded with his scores, and his show of strength and skill during the survival test helped prove that, but just the first few moves of the fight happening in front of them now were already on a new level. Zabuza repositioned himself after dodging only to gasp in pain and stagger while clutching his left side. The attack had burned his left side and a bit of his left arm pretty good without even touching him. That was a high-ranked kinjutsu, and he fired it with only one word. Just my luck I get to fight a monster brat, and with the way Kakashi retreated to guard the target, I'm guessing the kid is at least Jonin level, especially after his show of speed earlier. He was snapped out of his thoughts just in time to parry a diagonal slash from Naruto's sword with his kubakirabacho. His eyes widened however when Naruto's sword sliced a good three inches into his blade and he was pushed back from the force of the strike. Zabuza jumped back and quickly went through a long set of hand seals for his strongest jutsu, not liking how this fight was going so far. Suiten. Suiden. What a release. Water dragon bullet, a giant water dragon formed behind him and charged at Naruto. Naruto flashed through a set of one-handed hand signs before saying the name of his attack causing Zabuza's eyes to widen, he had never seen anyone but Haku do that. Rain. Jibashi. Lightning release. Electromagnetic murder. 
The result was a massively overpowered electric wave being launched from his free left hand at the dragon, causing it freeze its movement and burst into rain, but the attack kept going and electrified the water. Zabuza had jumped into the air when he saw the spark of electricity and watched in awe as his most powerful jutsu was obliterated. Before he could do anything else he felt a kick to his side that launched him back onto the shore and caused him to hit the ground rolling and grunt in pain as the kick had cracked at least two ribs before he staggered to his feet then fell to one knee being on the verge of chakra exhaustion from launching his most powerful jutsu. Naruto had seen him jump into the air and using the chance had Shunpo to his side and delivered a roundhouse kick to him. Before anyone could do anything else two senbin hits Abusa in the neck and he fell over limp to the ground appearing to be dead. Naruto seeing this sheathed his sword while Kakashi Shunshine does Abusa to check his vitals before giving a nod and covering his Sharingan. No vital signs he's dead. Then what appeared to be a hunter nin from the village hidden in the mist appeared about 10 feet away via leaf Shunshin and bowed before speaking. Thank you I've been hunting Zabuza for a long time waiting for this chance. The voice had a female tone and then she walked over and picked Zabuza's body up before nodding to them and disappearing in another leaf Shunshin. They all regrouped with Tazuna staring at Naruto in a bit of awe for his display, and before they continued Naruto spoke. Zabuza is alive and that was his accomplice, I sensed it right as she shunshined away his chakra network restarted. She must have put him in a death-like state with her senbin to get him out of here. They all gave surprised looks at that bit of information, but nodded their agreement it made sense for him to have an escape plan. The Kashi turned to say something to Tazuna but staggered slightly causing Naruto to put a hand on his shoulder. You overused your Sharingan Hakakashi sensei. The Kashi nodded and Naruto turned to Tazuna. Okay we better head to your house to rest for the night. With those injuries I'd say we have about a week till Zabuza comes after us again. Tazuna nodded and led them to his house. At Tazuna's house around 3 pm. The five of them arrived at Tazuna's house a short while later. Kakashi was fine but a little tired from watching the whole battle with his Sharingan. Tazuna introduced them to his daughter, a beautiful young woman who thanked them for guarding her father. Azuna also told them that he had a grandson, but figured the boy was out somewhere at the moment. Team 7 went outside to discuss what their plans were and Naruto spoke first. Okay like I said before we've probably got around a week before Zabuza tries to attack us again. My proposal is we use this week to train and guard Tazuna in shifts. I'll train Sasuke while Kakashi Sensei trains Sakura and the two who aren't training guard Tazuna and Kakashi Sensei can check on our progress every night. The Kashi nodded at that with Naruto's skills and Kumiko backing him up Sasuke would be spoiled for choice in the things they could teach him. Sakura nodded in agreement but Sasuke looked at Naruto a bit puzzled. Why train me Naruto? Naruto smirked and pointed to Kakashi with his thumb before speaking. The Sharingan, it's an Ichiha bloodline trait and you have the potential to unlock it so I'm going to help you do it and hopefully we'll get it done in the time we have if not I'll keep helping you when we get back to the village. This caused them to look at Naruto in disbelief before he continued. And Kakashi Sensei doesn't have Ichiha blood, judging by the way his Sharingan works, it's a transplant he received to replace his left eye, so he wouldn't be much help in awaking one compared to me and Kumiko, or as you know her the Kaiubi who knows quite a bit about the Sharingan. Sasuke and Sakura gasped out at this wondering how Naruto knew the Kaiubi and Sakura voiced that thought a moment later, while Kakashi looked on wondering what all Naruto would tell them. Naruto how do you know the Kaiubi? Didn't it attack the village 12 years ago? Sasuke nodded in agreement with her question. Naruto placed a sound seal around them so no one would hear and then gave them the same explanation he gave Kakashi, once it was over they both had a look of understanding on their faces and Sasuke spoke up. That's how you're so strong it all makes sense now, I knew it had to be more than normal training, but having the Kaiusari Kumiko sealed inside you and helping you train was beyond anything I expected. Sakura nodded in agreement with Sasuke making Naruto chuckle and nod at them before continuing. Okay Sasuke give me a minute to grab a few things from my pack and we'll start now we've got a while before diner and we'll need some space for the training I have planned. Everyone nodded and Naruto went inside the house and discreetly created a cage bunshin before giving it a recorder to spy on Gato to get the proof he needed to get Zabuza and Haku on his side before going back outside. He and Sasuke left while Kakashi and Sakura stayed to guard the house. After they walked for a while Naruto stopped in a clearing and nodded before turning to Sasuke with a serious expression causing Sasuke to get serious as well then spoke. Okay this is a good spot, now the Sharingan is awakened by life and death situations or an insane amount of training, so we're going to try and trick your body into awakening it by me attacking you while releasing intent to kill. Now I'm not actually going to kill you, but I'm going to release so much killer intent that your body will ignore your brain and awaken your Sharingan, or that is what hopefully will happen, even if we don't get it in time, this will still train you to resist killer intent and hone your reflexes, strength and stamina, the basics of a shinobi skill, and raise your overall level. 
Sasuke got a little nervous for a second hearing that, after Naruto's display against Zabuza, he knew Naruto could easily kill him, but he wanted to be stronger to be able to fight and have his revenge, so he nodded. Okay Naruto let's do this. Naruto nodded and began releasing Riatsu and Chakra together mixed with a sliver of killer intent. He had learned various techniques during his time in the Bleachverse and knew that Riatsu was far more potent than Chakra when mixed with killer intent, so this mix at a low level would push Sasuke even further. Sasuke's blood ran cold and he had trouble breathing when Naruto released his killer intent, it was already working the way the blonde had said it would, even though he knew Naruto wouldn't actually kill him all his senses were screaming for him to run away. Then Naruto blurred behind Sasuke just slow enough for him to follow and thrust a kunai at his neck, aiming just centimeters from his jugular. Sasuke moved his head to the side earning a cut on the cheek and jumped back to gain some distance. When he landed he looked up to see Naruto with a predatory look on his face, and then Naruto's killer intent flared higher, causing Sasuke to stagger slightly. What the hell is this weight on my shoulders, in my chest? This isn't normal killer intent at all. He was broken out his thoughts when Naruto sent a few senbin his way causing him to dodge right, right into a punishing roundhouse kick to his side. He hit the ground rolling and popped up onto his feet, with one thought in his head what in the hell did, clearing near Tazuna's house, 5 p.m. It had been two hours, but to Sasuke it felt like years he was at the end of his rope, then it happened Naruto spiked his killer intent once again and came in aiming a slash at his chest. Suddenly his vision cleared and gained a black and white tint and Naruto's movement slowed down considerably, he pulled his own kunai and precisely parried the attack, then returned one of his own, causing Naruto to dodge and land about five feet away with a smile and stop releasing killer intent, causing Sasuke to sigh in relief while trying to stop his panting. You did it Sasuke. You awakened your Sharingan. Sasuke's eyes widened, and he quickly looked into the reflection on his kunai sure enough red eyes with one black tomo greeted him back in each eye. He smiled, then looked at Naruto with a tired but happy expression. I did it. Thank you Naruto for helping me even if you are insane. Naruto smirked at his words and gave him a nod, then spoke. I'm glad to help, and you did well so how about we get back Tsunami-san should have dinner ready by now. At Izuna's house, 6 p.m. The two made their way back to the house, when they arrived they made their way inside and sat at the kitchen table with Kakashi, Sakura and Izuna. Sakura was the first to speak up with a smile directed at Sasuke. So how to go did you make any progress? Sasuke who had come not to mind Sakura so much since she lost most of her fangirl attitude, smirked and closed his eyes and with a bit of effort, opened them to reveal his red eyes, with the one tomo in each one, drawing a gasp from Sakura and looks of surprise from the other two at the table. Kakashi looked over to Naruto with an eye smile, then back to Sasuke. Nice work Sasuke you managed to awaken your Sharingan in only a few hours. Sakura nodded in agreement with that. Sasuke's smirk dropped and he shivered as if remembering a nightmare causing Sakura to speak. What's wrong Sasuke you look like something bad happened. Sasuke looked at Naruto for a second before answering her. He is completely insane, all he did was attack me with a kunai until I awakened my eyes. Naruto laughed at his answer, while Kakashi had to suppress a snicker, and Sakura had a look of horror on her face, before turning to Naruto with a glare. Naruto shrugged his shoulders in response before answering. Hey it worked didn't it? Before anyone could continue the front door opened and in walked a dark-haired kid wearing overalls and a fisherman's hat, when the kid saw them he glared at them before speaking. What are you shinobi doing here? You'll just be killed like all the rest, so you should just go back to your cushy village and leave us be. All of them except Naruto were a bit stunned at the outburst, so it took Tazuna a second to respond. Inari apologized to them right now these shinobi have agreed to help us and guard me so I can complete the bridge. Inari glared at them and was about to continue yelling at them, but stopped when he heard a cold bitter laugh and turned to see the blonde-haired shinobi staring at him. They were all puzzled as to why Naruto had laughed even Tsunami who had come out of the kitchen to see what the commotion was about before he spoke while staring Inari dead in the eyes. Hushy village. Ha the same village who hates me and one of the women I love just for existing. For something that isn't my fault. The same village in which some of the villagers tried to beat me until I became a shinobi recently. The yeah, real Kushi kid, if your life is so bad here then do something about it, don't whine and yell at us for trying to help your grandfather, even though it is beyond the scope of our mission. The coldness and bitterness in his tone drove home the fact that he was telling the truth and caused Tsunami to put a hand over her mouth, while the rest looked at him sadly and with some surprise at the details of his childhood even Sasuke. Inari looked shocked then a little ashamed and ran out of the room. Naruto stood from the table before speaking. I've lost my appetite I'm going to get some air, I leave a dozen cage bunch to guard the perimeter. He didn't wait for a reply and simply left the room. The rest of them went back to diner after a few minutes and the mood was slightly sullen for the rest of the night. In a clearing a ways away from Tazuna's house, 7 p.m. 
Naruto made his way into the woods to the same spot he met Haku last time and spent an hour or so talking with Kumiko and relaxing. Before long the clone he sent to spy on Gato returned with just what he needed a recording that captured Gato gloating about killing Zabuza and Haku after they did their job, but he was enraged when he heard Gato joke about letting his men use Haku before they killed her. That's it this insect will die by my hands as slowly as possible. He felt Kimiko's anger and agreement over the bond. He hadn't known Haku hardly at all before he died last time, but from what he knew of him or her as she was in this universe, she was an amazing young woman born to unfortunate circumstances who would die in a week's time without his intervention. Last time he had always regretted not being able to save Haku and Zabuza this time he was going to give his all to save them. With a new determination burning in him to save Haku and Zabuza, he let sleep take him knowing that Haku would find him like last time. Next time on A Beast Comes Home Chapter 7, Will Haku and Zabuza Believe Naruto? Whether or not they do I feel sorry for Gato because an ascended has him in his sights now. Clearing a ways away from of Tazuna's house, 7 am. With Haku. Haku had left Zabuza's side to gather some herbs that would help his injuries and was still thinking about the blonde shinobi who had dominated Zabuza when she came upon that same shinobi, apparently asleep in a clearing. What is he doing sleeping there? No matter it's best I leave while I can rather than risk getting caught. But despite her thoughts she continued forward as if she was being pulled towards him. When she was standing over the snoozing blonde she bent down and shook him awake. What am I doing I should get out of here. Hey you shouldn't sleep here you'll catch a cold. Naruto groaned and blinked his eyes open, then turned to look up at Haku. When he saw who it was he smiled at her causing her to blush before he answered. Nah I won't catch a cold, but apparently napping in clearings is a good way to meet pretty girls. She blushed a little more but laughed at him. Thank you for the compliment. He nodded and sat up before continuing. Hey it's the truth, anyways what are you doing out here? She thought about her answer for a bit, then decided to be honest for the most part. I'm gathering herbs for a friend of mine who was hurt. Naruto nodded and searched for a second before producing the recording with the proof of Gato's plans, causing her to look at him strangely before he continued speaking. Right about that I have a proposition for you and Zabuza. When Haku heard that she tensed up and started to go for her senbin but stopped herself. How did he know? But he said he had a proposition for us and he is stronger than Zabuza, so maybe I should listen. After a few ten seconds she nodded and he tossed her the recorder. There is the proof that Gato plans to betray you, and the proposition is that you and Zabuza join my clan and become Kanoha Shinobi, since I know Zabuza was trying to end the bloodline purge and that he didn't betray his village. Aku was surprised and it showed on her face, but she nodded and once she listened to the recording, she was clenching her fist so tight her knuckles were white. That bastard he thinks he gonna get away with this. I'm going to kill the little fucker. Naruto nodded in agreement then spoke. Don't worry he is a dead man, so what do you think of my offer? Haku thought about it for a few minutes, then nodded with a slight smile for Naruto. I have to ask Zabuza, but it sounds like a good solid offer, especially since we know you're stronger than him now. Naruto returned the smile with a nod, then spoke. Okay then how about I help you look for those herbs before we both head back? Haku nodded and the two began gathering herbs. Between the two of them they had all the herbs gathered in around 30 minutes. Before they both went on their way Naruto tossed Haku a tri-pronged kunai. Thanks to his ascended senses he didn't need the kunai, but it always helps to have a backup. Haku's eyes widened and she looked at him in a slight bit of awe when she recognized the kunai before Naruto spoke. If you need help, just throw that and I'll be there in a flash. After recovering from a bit of shock she nodded and tucked the kunai away on her person before saying her farewell and disappearing via leaf shunshin back to the hideout to tell Zabuza about Naruto's proposition. Naruto smiled and thought to himself that she was really cute when surprised before turning and heading back to Tazuna's house. Back at Tazuna's house, 8 pm. Naruto arrived back at Tazuna's house and called a team meeting. After a few minutes all of Team 7 was gathered in the clearing near Tazuna's house and quite puzzled as to what Naruto had to tell them so early in the morning. Naruto cleared his throat and began. Okay so I made a proposition to Zabuza and his partner Haku after I had my clones do some spy work and found out Gato was going to betray them. I offered them membership in my clan and the opportunity to become Kanoha Shinobi if Jiji approves and since there is a pretty good chance they'll join, I wanted to give you guys a heads up. Akashi's eyes widened slightly, then he began pondering. Sakura looked unsure of what to and maybe a little fearful. Sasuke seemed indifferent to whatever happened and nodded his understanding causing Sakura to give a hesitant nod as well. After a few minutes of pondering Kakashi nodded as well then spoke. Okay Naruto if they join us I don't see a problem with it, but since they're joining your clan they're your responsibility. Naruto gave a serious nod then continued. I gave Haku one of my kunai just in case she needs help and helped her gather herbs for Zabuza as a show of good faith when I ran across her in the woods earlier. 
The Kashi thought on that for a second and nodded, but gave Naruto a puzzled look, and so did Sasuke, but Sakura voiced the thought first. A uh, Naruto, why would giving her a kunai make a difference? Naruto smirked a predatory smirk before producing a tri-pronged kunai and twirling it on his finger, causing Kakashi to look at him in stunned disbelief and the other two to give him puzzled looks. Before Kakashi could explain what the kunai was Naruto tossed the kunai at a tree and disappeared in a tinge of black lightning. Once he reappeared he produced two more and threw all three before flashing between all three kunai so fast all the others saw was black flashes while snatching them all back up and then finally tossing the first kunai back to where he started and reappearing in front of the rest of his team with his smirk still in place. They were all stunned, Kakashi was a bit slack-jawed and Sasuke and Sakura looked frozen in place. After a few seconds they recovered and once again Sakura spoke first. How in the hell did you do that Naruto better yet what the hell was it? Sasuke nodded his agreement to the question, but before Naruto could answer Kakashi spoke up. That was the fourth Hokage's Jutsu the Horation is space-timed in Jutsu that lets the user teleport to wherever they have a special seal placed. Only the second and fourth Hokages and now apparently Naruto have ever been able to use it. It's also what gave the fourth Hokage the nickname of the Yellow Flash because all his enemies would see as a Yellow Flash. Sasuke and Sakura both gave Naruto disbelieving looks. Naruto just shrugged and answered. Hey even if he died the day I was born the fourth was still my father, so it makes sense I'd be able to use it and his notes were in the family vault. That got looks of understanding on their faces, and they nodded. Naruto then tossed each of his teammates a tri-pronged kunai before speaking. If any of you ever need help just throw those into the ground and I'll be there in a flash. Naruto figured he should let his teammates know about his Horation since they needed to work together and the Chunin exams would be coming up before long, but he wasn't planning on revealing his Shoten Horation unless he had to. The rest of the week went by fairly fast, with Sasuke getting two Tamo in each eye by the end of the week thanks to Naruto's training and help, along with a few more fire jutsu. Sakura more or less tried to improve her basic skill set and refine her already above average chakra control while learning some tactics from Kakashi. Naruto would go into the woods every night and spend a day in a time dilation field, refining anything he could think of and sharpening his skills even further. The rest their time was spent guarding Tazuna while he worked on the bridge and guarding Tazuna's family so they wouldn't get taken hostage. The day of the attack, near the bridge, 8 am. Team 7 thanks to Naruto's clones, knew that today was the day Zabuza planned to attack, so their whole team was there and ready, instead of just the ones who weren't training. Team 7 plus Tazuna were approaching the bridge in heavy fog when Naruto signaled them to stop and then stepped forward. Around 15 feet away two figures appeared via leaf shunshin, they were Zabuza and Haku. Everyone was tense except Naruto who appeared not to have a care in the world as he walked forward until he was around 10 feet away and spoke. Hello again, so what's your answer? I give you my word that the evidence I've given you is real and that my proposition is for real as well. Zabuza nodded and looked at Haku before answering. We accept we're tired of running and Haku deserves a home hell I'd like one too. Naruto nodded with a smile, then spoke. I can understand that until recently when I took over my clan I was an outcast in the village myself. So let's wait until Gato shows up and then there won't be any doubts and we can get out of here once the bridge is finished. Zabuza and Haku nodded and everyone found a place to sit while Tazuna got to work on the bridge. Everyone was little tense except Naruto especially Sakura and Sasuke who were understandably wary of Zabuza and Haku. While everyone was sitting Zabuza decided to speak up and directed a question towards Naruto. So Gaki what clan are you the head of anyways? Naruto answered as if it was nothing. I'm currently the head of two clans, the Namikas and the Uzumaki. My father was the fourth Hokage and made the Namikas as a clan before he died, and my mother was the last heir to the Uzumaki clan, so since they both died the day I was born, I inherited both clans. I wasn't strong enough to take over either, so I didn't tell anybody I knew who my parents were and trained in secret until I was strong enough to take over both clans. Dabuza and Haku went wide-eyed at that for a few seconds before recovering and looking at him in a bit of awe. Naruto just smirked and chuckled at their reaction. Before they could say anything else Naruto stiffened for a second, then turned to everyone else and spoke. One of my clones guarding Tazuna's house just dispelled some of Gato's thugs tried to take his family hostage, but my cage bunchins handled it. He's most likely on his way here if he tried to take them hostage as insurance. Haku scowled at the mention of his name and everyone else tensed and then they all nodded. At the end of the bridge, 9 am. It had been about an hour since Haku and Zabuza had shown up and just a few minutes ago Inari, Tazuna's grandson, had shown up leading a mob of about 50 villagers who had had it with Gato's crap. Naruto smiled at Inari before he spoke. Thank you all for standing up and doing what's right, but me and my team should be able to handle Gato and his thugs, so how about you all find a place to hide so we have backup if we need the help. 
that way you all can watch when he gets what he deserves without having to risk getting caught in a brawl with a bunch of thugs. After a bit more convincing Inari and the rest of the angry villagers agreed and hid in various places along the bridge, no sooner had Inari and the villagers hid than Naruto sensed Gato and about 200 of his goons approaching and moved to intercept them. Haku and Zabuza hid in the shadows as well waiting to see if Gato would reveal his plans to betray them. Naruto stood at the end of the bridge with the rest of his team about 15 feet behind him since he told them that he would handle it, which got him some skeptical looks, but in the end they agreed and Gato and his thugs stood about 100 in front of him. Beto stepped forward and spoke. So since you're here that means those two are dead, oh well I was going to kill them anyways they were too expensive when I can just hire a dozen thugs to do the same job. Naruto smirked at Gato giving away his plans and then spoke before he flashed through a set of hand seals. Gato your reign of terror ends here, send me a postcard from hell. Then spoke the name of one his most powerful jutsu while sweeping his arms in a circular motion, then pointing his right hand at the sky. Brayton. Derogen lightning release. Great wolf deity. The result was a lightning bolt shooting into the sky from his index and middle fingers, a few seconds later there was a rumble of thunder and a spark of lightning a few hundred feet in the air, which spawned a massive wolf made of lightning. Beto trembled and was about to turn and run, but before he could Naruto dropped his right hand while pointing at the group of thugs and their leader. The wolf howled into the air and disappeared in a flash of lightning, then there was an enormous explosion and Gato and his 200 some odd thugs were no more than ashes. Everyone stood stunned at the sheer power of the technique even the rest of Team 7, which had seen the technique during the graduation exam, stood slightly wide-eyed at the actual effectiveness of the jutsu. Naruto chuckled at their reactions and walked up to Haku who had stepped from the shadows looking at him in a bit of awe. He smirked at her then leaned in and kissed her gently on the lips she yelped slightly, but then melted into the kiss a bit and when he pulled back she was blushing as red as a tomato. He smiled slyly at her before speaking. Sorry but you look really cute when you're surprised and I couldn't resist. His words got a shy smile from her and a slightly deeper blush, which had him wondering if that was physically possible, considering how much she was blushing already. She would give Hinata a run for her money in a blushing contest. Man I can't help myself her and Hinata are really beautiful when they blush. After a few seconds Haku regained her bearings enough to offer a reply. Thanks for the compliment Yuzumaki-san. Naruto frowned slightly at that then smirked again and leaned in and kissed her even harder. This time causing her to actually sigh into the kiss and when he pulled back she was panting slightly with a bit of desire playing across her face. Naruto smiled gently before speaking. Call me Naruto, none of this Yuzumaki business. You and Zabuza are going to be members of my clan yes, but it isn't going to be like other clans, it's going to be more like a pseudo family than anything so relax. He then leaned and whispered huskily in her ear so only she could hear him. And by the way you're even cuter when you blush Haku-chan. Her cheeks colored slightly darker again, but then she nodded with a smile. Okay Naruto K kun Naruto chuckled slightly at the stutter and nodded, then made his way over to the others, with Haku trailing a few feet behind him. While he was walking Kumiko spoke up over the bond in a teasing tone. That is just unfair Naruto-kun, I don't think any girl could resist if you act that charming. You might as well give them a love potion and call it done if you're going to play it that way, I even got a little excited watching that. Naruto chuckled mentally before he replied. I have no idea what you're talking about Kumiko-chan. Kumiko shivered slightly at the sound of her name on his lips, then growled at him playfully over the bond. You're going to take responsibility for all this teasing tonight Naruto-kun. Naruto chuckled again over the bond and gave her a foxy grin and a nod mentally before refocusing on the outside world right as he finished the walk over to the rest of his team and the elated villagers who were cheering his name and dancing around. Team 7 plus Tazuna shook themselves out of their days and Kakashi was the first to speak. Good work Naruto, that jutsu really is something else, and now Haku and Zabuza have their proof. So once the bridge is done in the next day or so we can all head home and get those two settled in. Naruto nodded at that, then turned and gave Haku and Zabuza a friendly smile which Haku returned and Zabuza gave a friendly nod. Then turned and gave a big goofy smile and thumbs up to Inari who laughed with tears of happiness in his eyes. The next day, the bridge, 2 p.m. After some celebrations the previous day everyone had pitched in and gotten the bridge finished that day, so today was the day Team 7 plus Abusa and Haku were heading back home to Konoha. Everyone said their goodbyes as Naruto and the rest left Inari gave Naruto a teary-eyed heartfelt smile that Naruto returned with a big goofy smile and a thumbs up. As Naruto and the rest left Inari turned to Tazuna. What are we going to name the bridge Grandpa? Tazuna smiled and answered. I was thinking the great Naruto bridge in honor of our hero. Konoha, 6 p.m. Team 7 and company arrived at the gates just before sundown and after explaining Zabuza and Haku to the gate guards, made their way to the Hokage Tower to report. They arrived at the Hokage's office and after a five-minute wait were told to go on in. 
Naruto was the first in and smiled when he saw Hiruzen like always behind his desk smoking his pipe. Hey Gigi. Tsuritobi smiled at Naruto, then gained a puzzled expression when he saw Zabuza and Haku. Bakashi did the report for the mission, and once he finished turned the focus of the conversation over to Naruto. So Naruto offered them membership in his clan, and they are willing to become Konoha Shinobi. Hiruzen nodded, then turned to Haku and Zabuza. Okay Naruto, but you're responsible for them since they're now members of your clan. Zabuza couldn't help but ask the question. Just like that. Hiruzen smiled before he answered. Not quite Haku-sen is fine since she was never a shinobi for another village, but you'll have to see Ibiki tomorrow, since you were a Kirin in then a missing nin. After that you'll both be given a rank befitting your skill and be sworn in as Konoha shinobi. They both nodded their understanding before Hiruzen turned back to the rest of Team 7. Good work Team 7, you be paid for and have this mission marked as an air rank in your records. Now I'm sure you're all tired so take tomorrow off dismissed. Team 7 bowed and along with Zabuza and Haku left the room. In the middle of Konoha, 7 pm. Takashi, Sakura and Sasuke all said their goodbyes and headed home for some rest. Meanwhile Naruto turned and started walking off in a seemingly random direction, but noticed Haku and Zabuza weren't following, so he stopped and turned around. Come on you two dinner on me then I'll show you to the Namika's compound. They nodded and followed after the orange-haired Jinchuriki. When they got where they were going they were surprised to see a small raiment stand, but their stomachs rumbled causing Haku to blush and Zabuza to chuckle before they stepped in and sat down with Naruto. Naruto's mouth was already watering when he caught sight of Ichiraku's, so once Haku and Zabuza were seated he wasted no time. Hey old man, I want 10 bowls of Maizo ramen, and then whatever my friends here want is on me as well. Zabuza and Haku sweet dropped at his order but went after a couple seconds ordered as well. Uchi to his credit didn't even blink at the outrageous order he just nodded and turned to face towards the back of the shop. A.M. All hands on deck Naruto is back again. His daughter A.M. a pretty, slender girl with long dark brown hair, large black eyes and fair skin. Hurried to help him with the blonde's order along with his friend's orders. Their dinner was pleasant although Haku and Zabuza were amazed they had never seen anybody eat so much ramen and were wondering where in the hell the blonde put it all. After that Naruto led them to the Namika's compound and showed them to the rooms they would be using, but told them they could switch to different rooms if they didn't like them, since for now it was just the three of them in the fairly big house. Once they knew where their rooms were they all three sat and talked for a while in the living room, Zabuza said goodnight and headed to his room after giving Haku a knowing look that caused her to blush. Next day, Namika's compound, 6 AM. Naruto awoke from his relaxing slumber with a smile when he recalled the fun he and Haku his newest wife had gotten up to the previous night. That was pretty amazing if I don't say so myself. He turned his attention to the beauty that was currently using his chest as a pillow and began gently stroking her long black hair. Haku swam awake feeling the safest she had ever felt and completely content. Naruto smiled at her when she fluttered her eyes open and looked up at him with a smile. Did you sleep well Haku-chan? We did have some rather vigorous exercise last night. Haku blushed at his wording a bit but couldn't help the giggle that escaped her throat. Naruto chuckled and kissed her nose, then made a couple cage bunchen to make breakfast for the men's abusa. Then turned to her with a grin. How about we take a bath? I'll wash your back if you wash mine. Aku blushed a little deeper, but nodded while biting her lips slightly at the potential that it would bring for even more mind-numbing pleasure. An hour later the three residents of the Namika's compound found themselves having a pleasant breakfast together. Naruto was the first to speak up once everyone was done eating. Well abusa san it's about time for you to head over to Tiandai for that chat with Ibiki. It will probably take a few hours, but you should be back in time for dinner. Zabuza nodded to that and gave Haku a toothy grin before pulling up his mask as he made his way out the door, leaving his kubakirabacho behind since he wasn't allowed to carry it until he was a Konoha shinobi. Haku blushed as Zabuza shot her a knowing look as he left before turning back to Naruto with a small smile tugging at her lips. So husband what are we going to do today? His reply was a foxy grin before he stood and motioned her to follow him. Haku was a bit puzzled but followed the blonde until they stopped in the middle of the training ground behind the Namika's compound. Once there he activated the chakra concealment seals around the compound, so what he was about to do wouldn't alert anyone. Double checking the seals Naruto turned to her with another smile, then spoke. I figured Kumiko-chan has been in the seal long enough so I'm going to let her out. Besides a threesome sounds good right about now, and on top of that you two aren't just married to me you're married to each other due to the nature of the bond, so it's only right for the two of you to get acquainted. By the end he had started to purr the words while a sly smirk spread across his face. Aku blushed tomato red, but nodded nonetheless eager to meet Kumiko in person, after all three of them had seen each other's lives through the bond they had come to love each other. Still that didn't mean that she didn't give Naruto a slight glare for his teasing, causing him to chuckle before he turned back to his task. Naruto sat down into a lotus position and appeared in his mindscape. 
Naruto's mindscape Kamiko's room. He opened his eyes and was greeted by the sight of one of his lovely wives sprawled naked on her bed in the mansion he made for her in his mindscape. He chuckled at her before he spoke. Sorry Kumiko-chan that'll have to wait till later when you're out of the seal. Kumiko pouted at him causing him to chuckle again, then she got up and put on a red and black kimono. The two of them made their way to the front door of the mansion where there were bars with a seal in the middle separating the mansion from the rest of the mindscape, which now looked like a forest. Naruto walked through the bars, then turned back to face the seal with Kumiko inside, sending him love, devotion and reassurance over the bond. Naruto smiled at her and without hesitation reached up towards the seal just like last time a hand grabbed his, and Minato Namikaze appeared. Minato turned to yell at the Kaiubi that it couldn't have his son only to pause and gape in shock at the beautiful woman with red hair, fox ears, and nine red and black tails. Naruto chuckled at his father's shocked look before he spoke. Tusan, it's good to see you again after all this time. Minato turned to look at his son and once again was brought up short by the power in Naruto's eyes. Naruto chuckled again, then he reached out and touched his index and middle finger to his father's forehead, using his ascended powers to transfer a short version of what was going on and what he was. Minato did gasp then as all the information was transferred to him he was left on his hands and knees panting. After a few minutes Naruto helped his father to his feet. Minato having sorted through most of the information was in awe of his son, to think his son was 1200 years old, immortal and powerful enough to make the Kaiubi's power look like that of a child boggled his mind. Once he got over that he turned to the Kaiubi or as he had learned her name was Kumiko and bowed his head slightly before he spoke. I'm sorry Kumiko said I didn't know, me and Kishina suspected that you could have been being controlled, but we couldn't know for sure. Kumiko smiled at him and nodded back. It's okay Minato-san besides that course of events led me to meet one of my soulmates. Minato nodded with a bit of a blush at that having learned of the bond and how any wives Naruto might have would also be mated to each other. It kind of freaked him out, but at the same time to know that his son would have so many wives to love and be loved by brought a warmth to his heart. Naruto then walked forward and without further hindrance ripped off the seal. The golden cage doors creaked open before the cage shimmered and disappeared. Minato while still a little nervous over the whole thing but didn't interfere trusting his son completely after getting an idea about what he was. Kumiko smiled and made to rush and hug Naruto, but before she could golden chains appeared and attempted to lung at her, but they were stopped cold by clear shields. Naruto used his abilities to find Kishina and teleported her beside Minato. Kishina Yuzumaki was shocked when she appeared in front of what could only be her son. She had thought it was finally time to help Naruto learn to control the Kaiubi, but when she attempted to subdue her former tenant, she was stopped, then teleported to where she was now. She was brought out of her thoughts when a hand touched her shoulder she turned, and her heart stopped when she saw her husband smiling at her like always. Minato was so happy to see his beautiful wife again that he was crying when he spoke. Hello Kishina-chan my love. The words spoken he leaned in and kissed her with all the passion he could. Kishina by this point was crying as well and kissed him back just as heatedly. They were brought out of their own little world when they heard a squeal, and they turned just in time to see a black and red blur collide with their son Kashina tensed, but her husband's hand on her shoulder stopped her from doing anything. Kumiko was overjoyed she was free, and she had soulmate she didn't spare a word, and simply began attacking Naruto's mouth with her own all the while tears of happiness leaked from her eyes. The amount of pure happiness Naruto could feel from her caused him to smile into the kiss. After a few more seconds of kissing his beautiful vixen, a pointed clearing of a throat broke them out of their tongue war. Naruto looked over to his mother with a smile as he and Kumiko got back on their feet. Kishina was to put it bluntly very confused to see her son interacting with her former friend Kumiko. Former because of what happened during Naruto's birth that had led her to believe Kumiko betrayed her to gain freedom. She could understand the desire for freedom, but it had still hurt to think that one of her best friends betrayed her. Naruto grinned a foxy grin and with a burst of speed appeared in front of Kishina, gaining a surprised yelp from her before he spoke. Ka-san have I got a surprise for you Dadabeo. Before the surprise could wear off he touched her forehead the same way he'd done with his father and transferred an edited version of his life story with a little extra emphasis on his various wives and kids from a few different universes. Kishina was surprised by his use of Databeo, but before she could comment her brain was flooded with information about her son's life about countless years of training and battle, but also of beautiful loving wives and cute kids that grew to amazing people. Her heart swelled with pride and love for her son, but also quite a bit of sadness that she couldn't have been there to witness this. A few minutes later and much like her husband Kishina was leaning heavily on Minato while panting once she calmed down enough stepped forward and wrapped Naruto in a tight hug with tears streaking down her cheeks. I'm so proud of you Naruto you grew up so strong and caring I couldn't be any prouder I'm just sorry me and your father weren't there with you. Naruto nodded as a few of his own tears staked his face as Minato stepped forward to place his hand on his son's shoulder with an agreeing nod and tears of his own falling before he spoke up as well. 
The Sheena is right Naruto we couldn't be prouder of the man you've become, he then looked over at Kumiko with a gentle smile. Or the mates you've chosen for that matter. At this Kashina turned to Kumiko as even more tears poured down her face as she stepped up to Kumiko and wrapped her in a loving embrace before she spoke. I'm so sorry Kumiko-chan I didn't know you were being controlled. Thank you so much for looking after Naruto all these years and I want you to know you were always a sister to me and that I love you. Kumiko by this point was crying just as much and at the last part, a choked sob broke out from her throat before she replied with a teary smile. Kashina-chan you have no idea how much that means to me thank you so much. I think of you as a sister as well and I love you too. Naruto and Minato watched a reunion with smiles. Minato was glad that Kishina had her friend back he could tell that Kumiko's apparent betrayal had hurt his wife worse than she let on and now that everything was cleared up, she had her sister back. After a while Naruto got a mischievous look on his face before he suddenly took on a look of mock shock before exclaiming rather loudly. Oh crap I married my aunt. Everyone paused for a second before all three of them fell over laughing at the absurdity of that statement. Naruto chuckled at his own joke before shrugging and helping Kumiko up as his father did the same for Kishina, then spoke again. Oh well you're too sexy for me to care anyways. Then he kissed his vixen once again as they both smiled into it and she radiated happiness into the bond which he returned. Kishina and Minato smiled at their happiness before Minato felt a bit weak and looked down to see his feet starting to fade, he looked over at Kishina and noticed she was starting fade as well, so he cleared his throat and when they turned to him, he offered a bittersweet smile as did his wife having noticed the fading. Minato spoke first. Well it looks like our time is up Naruto just know that I love you son and that I'll always watch over you proudly. Kumiko I wish I could have gotten to know you better, but I can tell you are a wonderful woman, so you two take good care of each other. Kashina spoke next with a beaming teary smile. I'm so proud of you Naruto and happy that you both found each other and your other soulmates. Take care both of you and I love you both databane. Naruto and Kumiko held hands with a few more tears being shed all around as they smiled and nodded as Minato Namikas and Kashina Yuzumaki faded and moved on. Once they were gone Kumiko leaned into Naruto and they both faded from his mindscape with bittersweet smiles. Namika's compound, training field, 8 a.m. Naruto opened his eyes in the real world 20 minutes after he sat down with a sad smile on his face before it turned into a happy smile. He looked around and found Haku about 50 feet away just finishing up practicing her heightened jutsu when she saw him wake up. Haku smiled at her husband and walked over to him, eager to finally meet one of her other soulmates in person. Naruto concentrated for a second which resulted in a red mist seeping out of his body and forming a humanoid shape in front of him. After a few seconds it solidified into Kumiko wearing a red kimono and she had a beaming smile on her face, before anything could be said she leaned forward and gently kissed him before speaking. Thank you Naruto-kun you've given me my freedom and so much more. Naruto nodded and pecked her on the lips as well, then she stood and turned to Haku. Haku all of a sudden felt very nervous. What should I say? I know I know her, but this is the first time I'm meeting her in person. Before she could do anything Kumiko sauntered up to her with half-lidded eyes, causing her to gulp and blush slightly. Kumiko smirked at her reaction, and once she was right in front of her she leaned in and whispered in her ear. It's nice to finally meet you Haku-chan. Haku tried to reply, but before she could Kumiko nibbled her ear causing her to shiver, then gently grabbed her face with both of her hands and tenderly kissed her the same way she had Naruto for about a minute before pulling back with a gentle smile on her face. For Haku it was a stunning experience it was different from Naruto's kisses, but just as good which caused her to mew in disappointment while slightly panting with want when it ended. Kumiko and Naruto both gave her big foxy grins at a reaction, causing her to blush deeply before she smiled and pecked Kumiko on the lips, causing all three of them to chuckle. Naruto stood up and attained a serious look on his face before turning to Kumiko. There is still something I need to do for you my lovely vixen. Kumiko and Haku both looked at their husband slightly puzzled before realization hit Kumiko, and her eyes widened before speaking with a hint of trepidation in her voice. Naruto-kun are you sure? Naruto as usual just gave a big foxy grin before nodding. Haku turned to Kumiko for an answer. Kumiko-chan what is he going to do? Kumiko smiled before answering her fears eased by the knowledge of how powerful her husband is and his usual attitude. What he always does something crazy and unpredictable. Here she turned to Haku with a serious expression before continuing. No matter what happens next Haku-chan trust her husband, he knows what he's doing and he will always come back to us. Haku was a bit taken aback by the serious turn of events but gave a resolute nod before turning to Naruto to watch and see what her husband was up to. Naruto felt their complete trust and love in him over the bond, it made an almost unimaginable warmth spread through his chest. Turning back to his task more confident than ever he went through a set of hand seals faster than the eye could track before calling out the name of the jutsu. Shaiki Fujin, dead demon consuming seal. A chill went through the air as the specter that was the Shinigami in this universe appeared behind Naruto. 
Aku gasped at the sight of it, and Kumiko couldn't help but tense up due to their soul bond with Naruto, and his sharing some of his ascended senses with them, they could see the Shinigami in all of its glory. The Shinigami itself was instantly alarmed when it couldn't pull Naruto's soul free from his body, no matter how hard it pulled. Once it realized it wasn't getting anywhere it used its higher senses to examine Naruto, and was even more alarmed when it sensed that Naruto's own power far exceeded its own. Naruto turned to face the Shinigami before speaking. Hello Shinigami-san, I summoned you because you have something of my wife's the yin half of her chakra to be exact. I'm prepared to offer you the souls of Arachimaru and Madara Echeha in exchange for her yin half and letting my father's soul move on, since I know you prefer to torment truly evil souls in your gut, and since you can sense at least part of my true power, you know this isn't an empty promise, besides I always keep my promises. The Shinigami was intrigued from what it could tell this being whatever it was was strong enough to just take what it wanted, but instead was offering it two of its most sought-after souls. So knowing this being was offering it a fair offer that it really couldn't refuse, unless it wanted to fight a pointless fight, it knew it would lose it reached into its gut and pulled free the yin half of the Kaiubi's chakra, which quickly flew into Kumiko causing her to gasp and fall to her knees. Next it reached into its gut again and pulled free Minato Namikaze's soul, which had been spared torment due to its purity, before releasing it to pass on. Naruto watched Kumiko's missing half return to her before watching his father's soul which smiled at him due to gaining memories from the soul fragment and the seal move on to the afterlife to join Kashina. Once he was gone Naruto turned to the Shinigami and gave a firm nod. The Shinigami stared for a moment before bowing slightly which surprised Naruto and caused Haku and Kumiko, who had gotten up by this point to gape slightly before it disappeared. Naruto turned to his wives, but before he could say anything he was glumped by Kumiko who by this point was so grateful to her husband that all she could do was pour her love and gratitude towards him over the bond. Aku feeling the Kumiko's happiness was a bit overwhelmed as well so joined the two of them in their embrace. After a few minutes of the silent embrace which all three of them spent flooding the bond with love and happiness they broke up and Naruto grinned at them both before speaking. So how about we go inside and get you two acquainted? Haku blushed crimson at his wording and suggestion, and even Kumiko flushed slightly before turning to Haku with a smoldering look and a small grin. Husband I believe that is a marvelous idea. Naruto chuckled before offering his right arm to Kumiko and his left to Haku who took it while still blushing slightly. Naruto used his shoten Horation and a second later they were in the master bedroom of the Namika's compound. Namika's compound, master bedroom. 9 AM. All three of them curled up to the head of the bed and Naruto laid down in the center while they rested their heads on his chest. Kumiko grinned tiredly at Haku before speaking. Well Haku-chan I'd say that we'll be getting along swimmingly from now on. Haku blushed a little but smiled back before leaning over Naruto and kissing her gently. I think we will Kumiko-chan. Both of them then looked up at Naruto who was giving them a goofy grin. Before they could say anything he leaned down and captured first Kumiko's then Haku's lips in a loving kiss before drawing back and speaking. Let's rest for a bit my loves. Then I've got to help train one of our future mates after lunch. They both hummed their agreement with gentle smiles before all three of them drifted off to sleep as their love radiated through the bond. Clearing near the Hyuga compound, 1 p.m. Naruto arrived near clearing via his now customary black flash and immediately sensed the three extra presences. He noticed Hinata was in the middle of a sparring match against Kiba and looked to showing vast improvement from when Naruto began training her. Naruto turned his attention to the other two members of her team who were observing the match. The almost automatically oriented on the dark-haired beauty, standing beside the Aburam clan heir that was Kurunai Yuhi. Kurunai was observing the sparring match taking place in front of her in some amount of shock, having not seen anything close to this level of skill from Hinata before, but was broken out of her musings when she heard someone approaching. She turned to see none other than Naruto Uzumaki himself step into the clearing and begin to walk over towards her and Shino. What is Uzumaki doing here? Wait could he be why Hinata is so strong I heard the two have begun dating could he be training her? As she thought this through she came to the conclusion that it was the most likely scenario. Naruto spoke first with a foxy grin. Hello, Shino-san Kurunai-chan. Kurunai was caught off guard by his smile and friendly address, so couldn't quite suppress her blush much to her chagrin. Shino gave a polite nod to the blonde, while Naruto's grin widened to Kurunai's reaction. Kurunai couldn't help but ask her next question. I assume that you're the reason for Hinata's improvement Naruto-san. Naruto nodded his head before turning back to the match in time to witness Hinata close the distance and deliver the winning blow to Kiba's chest with her Jukin, causing him to fall backwards, of course, it had no chakra behind it or Kiba would be dead. As it was he got the air knocked out of him before stumbling to his feet. Kiba coughed a bit before grinning at his friend. That was awesome Hinata. You've gotten so much better I've gotta get more serious or you're gonna leave me behind. Hinata smiled shyly at the Inuzuka, but before she could reply she was grabbed from behind around the waist, causing her to let out an eat. Naruto smiled at her cuteness before speaking in her ear. 
That was amazing Hinata-chan. Hinata blushed slightly but leaned back into his chest before replying. Th thanks Naruto-kun, I couldn't have done it without you. Naruto grinned at her stutter before turning her in his arms and planting a tender kiss on her lips that caused her to almost faint as she blushed tomato red. Biba grinned at them while thinking to himself. Man those two sure are lucky I need to find an amazing girlfriend like Hinata-chan. Contrary to what most would think Kiba wasn't actually jealous of Naruto, for a while he had had a crush on the Hyuga heiress, but after getting to know her better, it had shifted into to a brother-sister relationship that he was happy with, although he did wish he had a beauty like her to love and care for. Pura and I watched the young couple with a smile, but inside was alarmed at her mixed feelings. Why am I jealous of Hinata? Why does part of me want to Naruto-kun to kiss me like that? Wa well, wait Naruto-kun. Come on he's just a genin. As she was having an internal argument with herself Naruto made a note to talk to Hinata about Kurinai's possible attraction to him and whether or not he should pursue her, since Kumiko and Haku had already told him that as long as he loved the women he added in they were fine with more or less anybody. Time skip and overview. After that Naruto helped teammate train for a bit longer, then took Hinata on another date where he brought up Kurinai's possible attraction to him. The conversation caused a lot of blushing, but after thinking it through Hinata agreed, but with a crimson blush, had made Naruto promise that she would be his before Kurinai. Naruto had chuckled but nodded, and their date ended with him walking her home and leaving her with a kiss like always. Over the next month and a half Naruto continued to train and go on missions with his teammates, while getting to know them all over again. During that time, he helped Hinata train as usual, and by the end of it, she was easily high tune and borderline jonin. They still hadn't gone all the way, but the way things were going it wouldn't be long he could feel it. He also had his clones gathering the evidence he would need to put down that old bastard Danzo once the invasion was over. Naruto continued using time dilation fields to hone his skills even sharper every night, and Haku and Kumiko had taken to joining him. They one of the Chunin exams, just outside of the building. At the end of the month and a half we find Naruto and his two teammates now friends at the entrance to the building where the first part of the Chunin exams will take place. Naruto was grinning both in excitement and nostalgia. Sasuke and Sakura both had a cool confidence about them that they lacked before, and with good reason ever since they graduated, they had been training themselves into the ground under the leadership of their sensei and third teammate. Naruto turned to them with a grin. Okay guys let's do this. We're more than ready. They both nodded Sakura with a small smile and Sasuke with a smirk. Naruto turned and pushed open the door. End of chapter. What if Naruto has a different tailed beast harem? Thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part. Comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.